Welcome back to the Open Chest Anime Podcast. I'm your host, the Anime Collector. Joining me today, Reese2753. Hi there. Uh, and, and Dan is also here. Yep, again. <laughs> and Etsy, and these are some great uh, high energy. And Foot2753. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll just use this as the uh, technical difficulty. Um, this is my microphone cable. Um, when I was in Arizona and my microphone was on a mic stand that came up from behind the desk, uh, this little bad boy got bent pretty severely, as you can yep, see. Yep, that's happened to mine. Um, <laughs> continued to work till some idiot who goes by my name uh, thought, why don't I bend it back? And then. <laughs> When I plugged that sucker in, the light went on, indicating it was receiving power. And then I let go of the cable, and the light went off. <laughs> so I am, uh, I am Hana Yuri dongling it today. <laughs> I've already bought a replacement cable. Um, it'll be here tomorrow. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna pretend like that was the technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> all right so it is one of the many uh uh anyway um oh viewership just dropped to zero so i guess they didn't buy my excuse <laughs> like literally i watched it go three two one zero <laughs> all right <laughs> that's good uh so no, let's jump in. right in uh let's jump right in so i've got uh i've got various uh things to talk about uh First and foremost, if you guys would like to support the Open Chest Anime Podcast, you can do so through Super Chats or our super cool and hip and definitely not hasn't had a post since over a year ago, um, Patreon. Uh, speaking of which, I've noticed that there are a couple of uh, watch clubs that we could probably get to, like, you know, Dark Cat. We did Red Line. Uh, so... No, that's one vote, and that's my vote. So we don't have to get that one. Dragon Dentist, and and that's that's it. Those two, those two are ones we should think about doing in the future. Uh, also, if you guys are, are interested in supporting me, um, you guys can do so via the Anime Collector Patreon, or there's this nifty little place called Stealth Weeb, and I've noticed in Juden Chan there's a couple of mugs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, not, not really good mugs, uh, not really, uh, mugs where they like make it clear what they say on them yet, but I'm keeping my eyes peeled. Uh, by the way, the watch club is going to be pushed till next week because, uh, I haven't finished it. Um, and Reese hasn't started. So there, anyway, it's not my um, fault alone. Don't worry. <laughs> so yeah, in Vic Mignogna, in Vic Mignogna news, Landon McDonald voices Rohan in a Thus Spake Kishibe Rohan OVA's English dub. Yes, I used the spake term because Nietzsche. Uh, anyway, Netflix um, is streaming it. So it's I don't know if it's owned by Viz or whatever, like licensed by Viz. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, we, I, I suspect you guys would be saying things like, uh, well, is it because it's the Netflix dub and not tied to Viz and then – Maybe when it goes to DVD, as we're going to talk about later with Baki, or did we talk about that last podcast? There's a lot of tabs open. We have so much shit to get through. Um, but but the thing is that they there's been this thing where when shows are getting licensed outside of Netflix, they're having to redub for some reason. I don't. I don't think Baki's getting. I don't think Baki's getting redubbed. I think they just said new dub just because it's a it's a dub. Okay, I, don't well, think it's, I, don't, I don't think it's getting redone. That's the question. Uh, the answer to this question may be uh, the fact that Vic himself tweeted out a congratulations to Landon McDonald. Okay, mm -hmm. um, saying like it's sad that I won't get to play this character again, but you know, congrats on landing the role or yeah. something of that. He effort. Has probably, replaced. honestly, honestly, probably just an effort to stop the I stand with Vic people from attacking. You know, yeah. somebody who got like same thing with Johnny Outbosh. Anyway, he, he he's also replaced Vic in um. Marbro's Motorcade. 
Bungo, Bungo Stray Dogs. Bungo Stray Dogs. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I threw one out there. I, I, it was a guess. So I guess I was wrong. All right. So anyway, um, so Landon McDonald revealed on Twitter on Thursday that he provides uh, that he's going to provide the voice for Rohan Kishibe in the English dub for the original video anime. Um, really, you couldn't have just said over of Thus Spoke Kishibe Rohan. Damn it, I already fucked it up. <laughs> um, Hirohiko Araki spinoff manga for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Uh, Vic Mignogna voiced Rohan in the English dub of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Diamond is Unbreakable. And all the rest of this is completely unimportant, uh, except for the fact that Netflix is going to be streaming it uh, on Thursday. To all it, is, it is streaming already, yeah. and all the all the cast who has who was in part four are in these episodes. <laughs> well, for- shit, <laughs> except for Vic. Okay. Huh. Well, there we go. By the way, we Burger, would you like to join the stream? Because I'll I'll totally send you a link on the download. Uh, um, I gotcha. Which is which is the best thing to do when the stream is uh, got so much. So, in coronavirus news, if you die from the COVID nineteen vaccine in Japan, the Japanese government will give your family over forty four million yen. Cha ching! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Four hundred twenty thousand U.S. dollars. Now that's putting your money where your mouth is. Only a few days ago, had Japan begun distributing the COVID-19 vaccine with, uh, while a little behind other developed countries, they seem to be trying. They seem to be trying to do it in as organized fashion as possible, staggering vaccinations to medical staff, the elderly, people with health conditions, and everyone else in that order. It's not without its challenges, however, and one of them re- remains the Japanese people's general skittishness when it comes to vaccines. It might seem surprising in a country that's all <laughs> that's all too ready to slip on a mask, but the fear of side effects and a general attitude of it probably won't happen to me has kept flu shot rates lingering at a steady 50% year after year. Despite the fact that in Japan, the number of flu deaths in 20, 2018 was about the same as COVID-19 deaths in 20... Imagine that! <laughs> you don't say... <laughs> However, (laughs) some who fear that the prevention might be worse than the disease may be swayed by a recent report that the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare will award a lump sum of 44,200,000 yen, uh, roughly 420,000 U.S. dollars, to the surviving family of any person who dies as a result of the COVID-19 vaccine and even cover funeral costs up to 2,000 U.S. dollars. It doesn't even matter if there was negligence on the part of medical staff or the vaccine producer. In other words, there's no strings attached, you know, except for the part where you die. (laughs) So so what I want to know is how many, uh, like, is the hitman business in Japan going to go up now? (laughs) Uh, Yeah. (laughs) I mean, this is... This is going to be quite the lucrative racket. You just get a bunch of people who are about to die anyway. Oh, get her to the... She's 110. Please, she's going to die of COVID. You know? <laughs> oh, no. Oh. She got the vaccine. Somebody cut, everybody cough on her quick. <laughs> Reese, you're commenting via Twitch? Oh, yes. there you popped in. Okay, there you are. Um, yes. So I would like to address uh, my <laughs> discomfort. Oh, actually, you know what? I think I think you're you get a pass. You get a pass because uh, I'm pretty sure on Twitch you can only use lowercase letters. Is that correct? Uh, I don't know. I, I just for reasons that I won't go into detail on. There's been a important document that has needed the FDDNM's name written in it numerous times. No, no, I'm not talking. About, I'm not talking about your your. I'm talking about your username, and I've had to type FDDNM. Oh. Over and over again, and I just like I I secretly am growing to hate you over your lo- all lowercase. All lowercase. <laughs> <laughs> hey, blame uh, insert a uh, uh, game here that I originally made the username <laughs> on. Okay. All right. Uh, anyway, yeah, I was gonna I was gonna give you both a hard time, and then I was gonna praise Dan for having a capital D because he's literally using his name. <laughs> all right, back to this. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't I? <laughs> All right. This is actually a long-standing policy of the ministry, which covers any kind of vaccination, not just COVID-19. However, it recently made news when it was brought up by Health Minister Norihisa Tamura at a budget meeting. Judging by the comments, a lot of people were unaware of this policy until now. Now that's some news. Let's hurry up and die. 
<laughs> wow. It also says you can get an annual 5 million yen if you're severely disabled by the vaccine. I like those odds. Oh, we've got a wonderful super chat from Weaburger who says, would love to join. Currently on vacation, though, and someone asleep next to me. So here's some green in my absence. Well, I appreciate that. I hope you're enjoying your vacation in Cancun with your dad, Ted Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. You, I don't know. It would be hilarious if that turned out to actually be true. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Ted Cruz only has girls, though. You have a very convincing male voice. <laughs> Go ahead and ignore. And that's Go the last ten dollars you're going to get from him. <laughs> Go, ahead and, Go ahead and just ignore my comment. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, what sounds pretty capitalist? Oh, like cap. Uh, got it. Got it. Like huh. cap. Capital letter. <laughs> got it. <laughs> Holy shit, finger slips and almost gave 300. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure your mom, who previously worked at Goldman Sachs, uh, Heidi Cruz, wouldn't have uh, liked it if you gave us more money. Than... <laughs> All right, this I don't know why this meme had to get started, but I'm gonna keep we running. wouldn't mind it though. <laughs> All right, man. Well, um, tell me where you're uh, vacationing. I'm curious. Um, what part of Cancun? <laughs> anyway, wow. It also says you can get, oh, I already read that part. Um, maybe this will help more people get the shot. Let the death game begin. <laughs> Seems simple, but isn't it difficult to prove that it was in fact the vaccine that caused the death? Well, I'll just tell you this. This isn't something that is strictly Jap Japanese. Uh, the U.S. also has this exact uh, sort of thing uh, with the secret vaccine cords that have paid out millions of dollars in tax taxpayer money, because I think it was Ronald Reagan who made it uh, made vaccine manufacturers immune from lawsuits or whatever. So not we foot the bill. They took a lawsuit vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> it was super anyway. effective. <laughs> that last comment is a valid concern, but it would seem that in practice, the opposite is actually a bigger problem. According to a report by Diamond Online, the ambiguousness of vaccine side effects tends to work in favor of the victims in court. As a result, Japanese pharmaceutical companies have been reluctant to produce vaccines in recent years because the financial risks outweigh the benefits. This, combined with the fact that much of the public isn't even aware of the policy, would suggest that it probably that it is probably more intended to coax Japanese companies to produce their own vaccines by reducing their liability. Literally exactly what the U.S. version of it is for. Um, however, Diamond Online also points out that even after accepting the government's money, victims still have the right to go after the companies in court. No way! I like, I like these. Uh, I, I like this. This odd turn of events the Japanese went where with their uh, version of the American law. Anyway, um, this brings us right back to square one as evidenced by the lack of any Japanese made vaccines during this time of peak mass inoculation. Still, like one comment suggests, uh, the new, the news, news of this policy could at least help bring more people to, to the vaccination table by showing the government believes in the safety of it enough to put their money on the line. No, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that for you. They believe in the safety of it enough to put your money on the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. That's tax dollars, man. Or tax oh, yen, I guess. Yeah. Oh, man. It does. <laughs> you know what that means is that now, like, everyone in Japan, if someone dies from the quote-unquote vaccine... Mm -hmm. um, Man, now everyone in Japan's got to foot the foot the bill for that person dying. Yeah, it, it's going to be funny though because it's like it's going to be one of those things where you know how there's been that like controversy about how in the United States, oh, I stepped off the the bus and got hit by a semi and died. Oh, that was a COVID death. It's like, oh damn, I took the COVID vaccine and died. Yeah, that was a COVID death. All right, yeah. <laughs> that was the vaccine. You died of COVID. You know? like, never, never mind the, the two shots to the back of the head. It was definitely the vaccine yeah. that killed him. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, good, good uh, stuff. All right, so um, I think there's one more thing before we get into pickups. Come on, this is going so, so well. Technical difficulties. Why are you? Oh, it's done. Sweet. Okay. Oh yeah, French dance music legends Daft Punk call it quits after 28 years. The French duo produced an animated tribute to Leiji Matsumoto during their storied career. Uh, so this was the worst news of the day, uh, by far. Unexpected news in the music world hit Monday morning when the publicist for French production and DJ collective Daft Punk confirmed to multiple outlets that the duo, composed of Thomas Bangalter and Guy Manuel de Homem Cristo, uh, have officially split up 20, 28 years to the day of their fateful formation in Paris. Why wouldn't you make it to the whole 30? <laughs> we have Burger says, yeah, I'm on like vacay <laughs> with some big name elites. Here's a clue. Blank James Island. Maybe you've heard. <laughs> Well, say hi to Epstein, who I'm sure is very much alive and well, <laughs> on St. <laughs> <Saint> James Island. <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm digging this meme. <laughs> so I, I would call this like the new king of uh, anime breakups. Yeah, uh, for sure. This is uh, heartbreaking. To further confirm the news, and as a final act, the official Daft Punk YouTube channel has been updated with the short film simply titled Epilogue, which is, an, which is excerpted from their 20, 2006 film Electro, Electroma. Okay. Uh, but here's the thing. So um, in Electroma, it didn't use the Random Access Memory song, did it? The, the no, one from it's that a, album? There, was a music video, there was a music video that used it. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying that the footage originally didn't use touch. Yeah. No, that that, that, that movie came song, right? that movie came out in 2006. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm saying is that that song yeah. couldn't possibly be that old, right? Right, right. Yeah, I, that's what I thought. Okay. It used footage, but they put the song over it, just like they did right. for um, it, one of the it, other music videos. It fit so absurdly well that it was really off-putting that they were able yeah. to just like slide a new song over it and it felt uh, uh, intentional you know daft punk was a mainstay in electronic music in their native france and worldwide by fusing house music with pop sensibilities whatever the fuck that means which not only served to endear them to club goers but also made their music more easily accessible to audiences that would ordinarily not be exposed to dance music uh you know like the people in the town of footloose <laughs> 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 using their success from smash hits around the world and defunct from their chart topping debut album homework as a springboard the duo went even further by producing an animated tribute to japanese anime industry luminary leiji matsumoto in interstellar 4 5 with matsumoto serving as supervisor which fused their second album discovery with an original animated film and uh, and spawning music videos for One More Time and Harder... Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, music videos for the whole goddamn album. <laughs> like, yeah. Are, 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 you, are you saying that they have different... Music movie. Yeah, are they saying Are they saying that One More Time and Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger um, are uh, the only ones where the actual footage from Intercell 4 or 5 is considered the music video? Perhaps like um, Maybe the only dolls and all the other ones, because one. all the, the, the entire thing don't. is in music video format. On yeah, music, yeah, on it is. But I'm, I'm wondering if they have an alternative music video for the other songs. And no. but these, no. Two, okay, we'll have to look. I don't know. Such was the response to Intercell Four or Five that Toonami aired the above music videos from the film and further exposed the duo to another audience that normally would not be familiar with the music or the duo to incredible success over the years. The film and music videos were popular vestiges of the early block in 2003, further propelling the group's visibility in the mainstream. I mean, I was there. I watched that shit on Toonami. I stayed up late at my friend's house and he fell asleep. Uh, also, The Gorillas was part of that. They did the uh, Clint Eastwood uh, music video. Uh, and yes, they do show the zombie reach out from the ground 
and grab uh, Murdoch or whatever his name is nuts. <laughs> so <laughs> they showed that on TV <laughs> on, on Tsunami. <laughs> In recent years, the duo took a more experimental direction and even dipped its toes into soundtracks with Tron Legacy before releasing the album, which many consider the apex of their career in Random Access Memories. And there's a couple of good songs on it. <laughs> Full of funk and soul references in 2013. Their most recent output consisted of more subdued contributions to productions, such as the collaboration with The Weeknd, which resulted in Starboy and the Captain of Outer Space. Uh, the duo's impact on pop music is deep and spans decades, and their iconic stage presence will be missed, helmets and all. Most of all, their love of anime will not go without recognition. Uh, now to sort through my vinyl and spin homework all day. All right, well, you do you, Paul Chapman. Oh, uh, no, it's um, Berto, sub, sub, sub age. I don't even know. Um, human, yeah, after so all a, human After All is a better album, in my opinion. Um, so what are, there's, I think at the end of epilogue, it shows all of their albums, which there are a surprising few of, uh, no, it's not. Nope. There's discovery, homework, human after all, random access memories. And is there another one? The Tron soundtrack, I guess. Tron legacy. Yeah. Tron, yeah. So this is going to really suck when Tron 3 comes out. <laughs> like, the, the best part of that movie was the soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. No, for, for real. Well, I mean, also Olivia Wilde, um, who yeah. very much looked like Motoko in that movie. And I'll never forgive them casting Scarlett Johansson as her uh, in the actual Motoko Ghost in the Show movie. Um, oh, yeah. The two live, <laughs> two live albums. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Weirberger says, I kid, I kid. I'm only in Orlando to see someone special. Uh, well, hey, man, have a good time. Stay safe. Um, stay, stay safe. <laughs> yeah, it's Orlando. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, like, you know, like from storms and shit. I don't, I, I don't think there are any happening right now. <laughs> Maybe go check out Super Saiyan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sad to see them split. Been a fan since seventh grade. That's before Reese was even born. Um, uh, doubt. Press X to doubt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe before FDM was born, though. <laughs> hmm? I wish what, Daft Punk was uh, Weaburger says that he's been a fan of Daft Punk since seventh grade, which is before Reese was ever born. Um, oh, yeah. Alive. You, Alive was that. Uh, um. I, I want to say if you were in seventh grade in 1990, then uh, yeah, I don't think Daft Punk had, was really that big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, considering it, they started in '93, as as evidenced by the uh, <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah, Alive '97. That that's when I was born. So um. So just <laughs> just real quick, for anybody in the audience who doesn't already know this, Reese, despite his very childish voice, is actually uh, turning you know, thirty in two weeks. Yeah, so <laughs> Reese is only like eleven, though. Yeah, he's a show. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. Okay. So uh, so this sucks. Um, I, 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 oh my god! I just thought. Like, it, it's four, ironic. Four, like, 14 going on 30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the fucking Nezuko of the group. You can... <laughs> yeah, so uh yeah, I'll just say though that like this sucks. It's 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 funny because like in in the last like five years or more, every year just music legends are dropping left and right. And it's funny that the one that hurt the most. Not the king of pop. No, it's just freaking Daft Punk saying, ah, we're not going to do this anymore. <laughs> Nobody's dead. You know, they're just like, ah, whatever. <laughs> they haven't put anything out since Random National which I didn't, right? personally, I didn't really think that album was that good. So there are, I think that a couple of the songs on that album are their best songs they've ever written. But the rest of the album is like, I listened to it to get to the good stuff. Yeah. Um, I think I think "Touch" is probably my favorite song they've ever written, um, yeah. and then uh, I, I really appreciate the one with Giorgio Moroder. 
because uh, I'm, I'm also a big fan of Giorgio. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that I think that uh, Discovery is probably their most consistently good album, um, which is ironic because the best track on that album for the the rest of the world is One More Time, and that's probably my least favorite song by them on that album. Just be not that it's not good, but that like every other song in there is so good, and that one is just like the normie edition of Daft Punk. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, of course, um, in the same vein that uh, uh, Brad uh, treats voice actors he's never known that died, um, I couldn't really, I don't really care. Um, but yeah, I guess that's sad. For all right, we don't need this do negativity. Care. Bye, Dean. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, a lot of two thousand seven is. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So good. They have, well, I, I feel like we could talk about this all night, but I'll just say that they have a couple of remixes of some of their early they have, work. They have entire remix albums. Yeah, where it's their early work mixed with their later work, and it's like, how is this so good? How is this? How is the sum of this equal to more than it's the sum of its parts? How, I always fuck up that saying. <laughs> anyway, um, all right, you guys want to go to pickups? Uh, I. Oh, you had one more thing in the opening discussions after this one did, did about I? my anime list. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. My anime list secures an investment from Kodansha, Shueisha, and Shogakukan. My anime list outlines planned improvements to the platform. Uh, those improvements are probably gonna gonna be like you know. Uh, subscription services and, you know, ways to give uh, Kodansha, Shueisha, and Shogakukan money. So Japanese publishers Kodansha, Shueisha, and Shogakukan have joined my anime list parent company Media Do Co. Ltd. to invest in my anime list, implementing a third-party allotment and underwriting half of the platform's newly increased capital. My anime list announced plans to issue new shares on Thursday, and the new capital increase adds up to 1,200 yen million. Two, I'm sorry, 1,200 million yen, or around US 11.33 million dollars. That's a really way, weird way to phrase that. Why wouldn't you just say 1.2 trillion yen, or whatever that would end up being? Um, funds obtained through this third-party allotment will go forward will go toward improvements to my anime list as a whole. This includes the accelerated expansion of the platform with increased information exchange, stronger connections between users and the Japanese companies involved in the content, improved, uh, improved accessibility for new and returning users, and boosted site performance. Among the immediate plans are infrastructure changes to increase speed and advanced UI slash UX features, multi-language database and user list support, user communication tool enhancements, and improvements to the iOS and, an and Android apps. My anime list currently boasts a content database of over 250,000 user-maintained entries, over 375,000 reviews and recommendations, and a collection of approximately 18 million active monthly users in over 230 countries. Media Do acquired the platform in January of 2019. Uh, wow. Uh, I don't have anything to say about a service I don't use. Um, imagine that. Uh, do you guys have anything you want to say? No. Cool. I, All right. Let's, I, who, who I have no idea do? what my anime list even is, to be honest. Uh, so that's because you use an, the far superior anime plan. Um, but he doesn't uh, even yeah, use it, that, so yeah, it's I, like two levels of disconnection. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it's it's uh, it, anime it copied planet. anime planet. And then became more popular than Anime Planet because it also included hentai. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. That's okay. I, that makes sense. That's effectively. Why would you? It, yeah. it, why why would a, you not include hentai? More comprehensive. More so the the, cre oh, the creator. No, but yeah, hentai well, the, is the, for cultured people, right? Isn't yeah. That, well, isn't that what they the say? creator, the creator of Anime Planet, because I started using it, I believe, the year it, it was made, um, and the creator of Anime Planet. Uh, Sothies, I think her name is. Um, she had ambitious plans or a vision for the site that didn't reflect where where the users were. Like 
not not that it didn't reflect where the users wanted it to go, but that it impeded the user's ability to get the site where they wanted it to be quickly, right? And what I mean by that is that part of the rules for um, for getting a like submitting a uh, a title uh, into you know like if if they didn't have something in their database and you wanted to request one, is that that title had to have a review or not a review like a synopsis that was written by a user of the site. It couldn't just be copied and pasted from Wikipedia uh, because the creator of the site wanted everything to be unique and like, you know, not just a copy paste of other places. They wanted to be unique. You had to submit your own screenshots. Um, like they, you actually had to get screenshots you didn't find off of, uh, off of um, Google image search and stuff. Um, and there were all these things that they were kind of, they were sort of stuck in an idea that maybe at the end wasn't the best way to do it. And things have changed a lot since then. Uh, for instance, stuff is getting added with the Wikipedia entry or the Funimation entry or Sentai says this about the show kind of kind of things just to get them quicker out there. Uh, but one of the things that just still hasn't come to the site is Hentai. That's one of the, one of the things that hasn't gotten there. Um, and the decision for that at the time was that it was a platform that, you know, somebody of any age could use. And at that time, there wasn't a thought of, oh, we could just age restrict this stuff. Like you have to enable that to be able to see it, you know? So it's just, that's, because I've talked to her quite a bit actually, because uh, I love the site and I, I wish that my anime list would merge with it and use the interface of- Were all of your um, talks with her, add hentai, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I was gonna just say like, well, well when, when she, when she finally my, exposes the, uh, the death threats. It'll be all from my account. No, so just that, well, actually, so close. here's the thing. No, here's the thing. Legally there speaking, is, there, hold on. There is hentai on Anime Planet, but it's, but it's all only her faves. Yes, actually, that's what I was gonna say. It's really? all stuff that she has seen. Yeah. So, um, and just to be, just to be clear, I like so these a lot. Um, I don't think that she thinks about me, uh, often, but I consider us like friendly, like friends kind of like, um, cause we've <laughs> talked more than she probably would recognize just because she probably talks to a lot of people. Um, but I just, I have nothing but good things to say about her. All right. So, all right. Who wants to do pickups? You. <laughs> I well, I've I've only got friggin' one. Well, that's more than mine. Oh, I'm not done counting. <laughs> I have like Two. 24 pictures of pickups. Three. <laughs> Thank fucking God. Right stuff ran out of the boxes that said right stuff. <laughs> and... From Japan. <laughs> uh, okay. I know that is. Yeah. So um, I'll start. I think this is the right stuff. I'll just put this, this screw in. Um, so I know what these are. These were things I ordered before I left uh, Arizona. That's the wrong way. That's, that's <laughs> wrong hand. <laughs> I'm like, why can't I get that right? <laughs> Yeah, these are these are things that I ordered uh, months ago that um, were like you know like held back by a pre-order item or whatever, so they never ended up shipping until recently. Four K Castle Caliostro. Hensuki. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, no. Dan, you remember Hensuki? I do remember him. Hensuki. <laughs> you still have your uh your stack of panties? <laughs> mm, uh probably not. 4K Cobra. Oh, I thought you already had that. I think you were there when I ordered it, but I, it's finally arrived. Uh My Hero Academia Season 4 Part 1. My Hero Academia Season 4 Part 2. Wait. Does that say part one on it? Oh, oh season four. I was gonna say what the heck? <laughs> yeah, so that's gonna that's gonna you know go in there. Okay, is uh, that larger really... than the the 
third box? I don't know because fourth because box? I don't have I don't have that close to me. There does appear to be something in the middle of it, like a art cards or something that I, I don't thought, care about. That looks thicker than the thought, latest purple one. All I know is that uh, Airy needs to be protected. <laughs> <laughs> Best character in that show by a long margin. <laughs> yeah, like. Okay, now I actually don't. Re I know what one of these is. I think it's that one. Oh no, I know what this one is. I know what both of these are. Yeah, there's two Kickstarters here. I, I forgot what that one came in. So I can't. I don't. This is this box is too small for what's supposed to be in here. So I'm a little bit nervous as to what they've done to me. So you guys know that I've been collecting those. Um, well, maybe it's not too small. I think maybe it is. I don't know. No, it's, it's exactly the right size. Uh, so you guys know I've been collecting those uh, VHS tapes. Oh, dear God, I can't show any part of this. Um, yeah, that, we're gonna leave it at that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that that company in in uh, California that was putting out um, raw Japanese without subtitles tapes. I I think I got the last two that I needed to complete that. Um, oh god, this is heavy. Um, so the fact that nobody else really has pickups other than Dan from the same thing I'm about to show uh, tells me that I'm the only one who backed this. Uh, I think Lishansky backed this one, and I'm probably going to sell these actually because I bought them, them due to plural. my. Why well, I backed it because of my uh, my current work situation, which allowed me time on break. I'm going to give it away if I don't open it faster. <laughs> uh, oh, snap. Uh. Oh, is that the... It's, it's the third edition's oh, okay. Berserk, Akira, and Miyazaki thing. Nice. So, um... Yeah, You're not so open I said you sell it. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably gonna sell it. See, because the thing is, I was gonna read them because of my previous, you know, working environment where I could I, I could go on break and I was reading, you know, like um, hundred years of Japanese film, and I was gonna read next. I was gonna read the uh, J uh, Otaku Japan's database animals and whatnot, but I just like now that I now that I'm wet all the time because I'm you know, spraying water all over. So I'm definitely not reading uh, <laughs> during break. So, and then I've got from Japan. Reese, FDM, you, you didn't get, you didn't, you didn't get these. You didn't. I swear there's a slip. Code well, I, I, I can't somewhere. comment because you're taking seven years to unbox it. I think I know what it is, but I don't want to say anything. Yep. I knew what it was. <laughs> No, I did not buy that. English dubbed and uncensored. What yeah, I did doing? back that. Mine just hasn't arrived because I'm in uh, the, you're the a, North you're Pole. You're a person. Yeah. Uh, so it's got a nice uh, slip cover? clear case. Yeah, the slip cover is um, shrink-wrapped, uh, which is great because now I can't open it. So thanks, guys. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure they sent me the digital, though. I just haven't watched it yet. They already sent it, but the thing is it expires if you don't redeem it I, within a certain time. I believe time. I downloaded it. I just haven't watched it. So anyway, those are my uh, pickups. Um, and I've got my trash a little bit now. Speaking of things being shrink wrapped, is your My Hero Academia Season 4 Part 1 shrink wrapped around the slipcover? No, it is not. My season four part two, it was. That's Only different. a couple companies do that. Um, yeah, Discotech, Discotech does that. Yeah, you know, Discotech um, does it, but this is the first time I've seen. Yeah. Discotech does it, this does it, and this is the first time I've seen Funimation do it. Uh, where's it? No, where is. For some reason, my. Page that has all my pictures oh, is not pictures. Being showing. Is not why showing. You, why don't you just load them into the uh, into the thing, and, and so you can just click the, the button and show the image. Because it's twenty four images, and it takes for fucking oh. ever to upload them. Oh, I totally forgot I put this shit in the dock. Oh yeah. Hold on. 
Oh boy, I can't wait till we get back to. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna share this for one second just to get out of this fucking window. Oh. And then remove. Stop. Share. Share screen. There it is. Hey. All right. Lance says, uh, SMD. What a chat. Hmm. Hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, so I got Judge's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind Part 2, and then Lupin the Third, uh, was it The Columbus Files, hmm. and then Magic Academia Season 4 Part 2, and then Blue Exorcist 25. The Boredom of Haru Suzumiya and The Disappearance of Haru Su Suzumiya, which both of these are the same size. So, like the, the, how the first two were different sizes, like the taller and wider. Yeah, yeah. Like these are exactly the same size this time. And so I'm just well, gonna I'm just gonna breeze through all of this real quick. Uh, <laughs> You can you can you know take a little time if you want because I'm I'm doing Operation uh, Test the upload. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so uh, I got another. Well, I didn't get another set. I've had the set. I got the set the same at the same time as I got the uh, the Mustang. I got I bought both of these at the same time. And so I've been sitting on this one for a little bit. And for some reason, this last week, I just started opening the box and then taking out the bags and sorting the bags. And it's like, fuck it, I'm going to order pizza and put this half, put half of this together. So I uh, get back to this one. Nope, that's not the one I want. This one. Okay. So these are all the bags. We got one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, four. And then this one, which isn't numbered, but this red rod in here, that this red rod right here, this is in phase one. And then these four, the four tires and the windshield are in phase four. So, so this is just phase one. And then progress, progress. I think this is not, no, hold on. No, it's not. Okay. So here's that red rod. Progress. This is the end of phase one. And I was standing by, on, by my bed for that entire phase one and my back started hurting, so I moved to the bench and sat on the floor and did the rest of it. <laughs> so, got the chunk. A lot of mechanisms, lots of mechanisms in this. Here's the engine, which these four or these six things coming out of the side of the engine are just revolvers. And I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I, I messed up when I put when I started this because I uh. Phase at the start of phase three, on on the on the one page on the on the left, there was one step that involved putting in basically a base layer underneath where the engine is supposed to go, and I accidentally skipped that step, and so when the the mechanism with that, that red rod, when I did when I would move that, the engine would pop up because I didn't have that bottom layer in there to, to raise the engine up that just like fraction of an inch. So I had basically had to go back and tear everything and back apart just to put that base layer back in. And then while I'm here, these are basically just skeleton arms that are holding the, the headlights on. Uh, oh. And, and I'm, I'm gonna come back to that little uh, tidbit of info. Aren't those the arms that they use for the droids uh, for the Star Wars set? Uh, I know they use them for the skeletons, for the metro figures. Oh, yeah. 
more of these. We got the back end. Roof. And then this was the finish. It's the Aston Martin DB5. This is the James Bond Aston Martin. J JB007. Now these, uh, actually I can go through <laughs> these. Tactical. <laughs> so on the back, this guy has an ejector seat. This is all the, the, the mechanism for it. It's got two rubber bands on the inside of there. That Dude, in the video you sent us, that yep. ejector seat ha comes out so fast that all I can actually see is it falling back down. <laughs> and I thought you were just dropping something on on it for some reason. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then I'm I, I'm like really thinking before I say something stupid. I'm like, holy shit, was that an ejector seat? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so, yeah, there's the ejector seat, and then um, the only thing that's not shown <laughs> in this level hey, of detail hey, Reese. is right here is the panel for is, the uh, just chat on the screen for you. What's going on? Oh. There's a chat on the screen for you. There's <laughs> Red Rod. Okay, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Powerful extended. <laughs> oh, th thanks for the $2. That's all mine, by Thank the you way. Thank you. I will take by the way, did you got the link, right? We sent you a link if you want to join Greenline. Yeah, I, I sent you a Greenline. I sent you a link on Discord and Lance. They're Check all your ghosting him. So, um, oh, what was that? Cut to I have three windows. Okay, here. This, see the square right here? This is a panel, and you can see part of the wheel. You roll this, and the uh, radar GPS kind of thing rolls over. That's the only thing that wasn't really shown in this level of uh, detail. And over here, we have a phone. There's a phone in the door. And then uh, I guess you can kind of see the panel. There's like this little gear here. And then... It has these little these little rods go in the trunk, and you can add the at the ends of the uh, hubcap, the centerpiece of the hubcaps for the tire size. Well, they're, they're really going all out with like the classified classified. And then here's here's that the <laughs> my red rod right here in 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 high definition detail, and so this is you move the uh, shifter stick back. And it'll roll the headlights forward to show the what's the the get the uh, machine guns in the front, and that's that's the purpose of that mechanism. And then we've got the license plates on both ends have four are four sided, so you can roll through and the different license plates. And then you can turn this uh, exhaust tip. And the bulletproof shield goes up behind the, the rear window. So that's pretty cool. It's just pretty simple. And this is basically just the, the back wall of the trunk. And going back to the skeleton arms and the guns and the, the, uh, the engine, every set comes with extra pieces. And this set had an extra arm and an extra gun. And so I decided to put them in the night bus and have like a, a skeleton arm holding a gun hanging from the ceiling on the top on the top deck. And I noticed it today. How when this is on the bus itself, the gun lines up perfectly to point at uh, Ernie the driver. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. And so th this this. Uh, stack of stuff is from the Fiat. This stack of stuff is from the Mustang, and this stack of stuff is from the bus itself, from extra pieces. I decided to add some stuff to the top deck just because I felt it was mostly empty. So I just like, you know, the leftover junk that got left behind, or just where crap accumulates. That's, up on that's the top your deck. junk drawer, your Lego junk drawer. Yeah. So the. I thought this was hilarious. I find this absolutely hilarious. You're just a skeleton arm hold, holding a gun on the night bus, and it, and it's sized for minifigure minifigure. So I had Harry holding the gun for a little while, and <laughs> yeah, times are getting rough. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. 
That's that's my okay. Lego story time. That's probably the last well, Lego story time for quite some time. Oh man. Uh, yeah. Christopher Barker says, "Greetings, fellow delegates. Well, nice to have you here. Uh, I think uh, did the Snyder cut come out? No, the trailers did. I don't think it comes out till March. Okay. Though. I could be we wrong, live, though. We live in a society. <laughs> uh, all right, so I've got uh, I've got some. Uh, so every once in a while, because it's been a while since we've had an actual Kickstarter, uh, I just go ahead and you know check out anime on Kickstarter and I find some shit." Samurai, the legendary Ronin, an anime series that explores political and social justice. Good. That luck. sounds like everything I'd ever dreamed of in an anime, especially yeah. made by presumably people from Japan. Mm, probably. Yeah. Not. <laughs> so, uh, wait, Kickstarter still has hashtag Black Lives Matter under it. <laughs> I'll have that till the end of time. Yeah, yeah that that'll. Uh, that's a permanent feature now. Oh yeah. So yeah, um, it's it's kind of cringe. Uh, also, Snyder Cut comes out. Oh, uh, <laughs> Snyder Cut comes out March eighteenth, apparently. Yeah, it's um, right for change. I hope we get Blu-ray for that at some point. Oh, Christopher Barker says it's everything I want and more. So uh, I thought Mr. Nice Guy had an interesting uh, tweet where. Uh, apparently, the Snyder Cut, they're saying that he's going to have a cameo, a superhero cameo at the end that's going to blow fans' minds. Uh, Mr. Nice Guy saying it, it's he's like, I, I guarantee you it's going to be Dr. Manhattan so that they can do the uh, the Watchmen uh, apocalypse uh, uh, Superman crossover story or whatever. I don't know. I'm like, I didn't know that was a thing, but that's that that seems like logical because it's Zack Snyder. It's right? either gonna be Martian Manhunter or Green Lantern. Yeah, most likely. Um anyway. So yeah, this this the anime series that explores political and social justice issues, uh, it's definitely gonna get it. It's trending perfectly to reach its goal. Oh wait, no, it's not. Um uh, it looks cringe. And also the art style uh kind of sucks like a lot. <laughs> Uh, here's the guy. Um, no, he looks nothing... Japanese. Yes, he's. Um... He spent more time taking that photograph than she <laughs> spent making this work. I mean, I'm not gonna get on a guy for caring about how he presents himself, but you're probably right. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, I, I don't have anything necessarily bad to say about it, other than. Uh, I mean, it, honestly, I'll be real. If, even if this was like, it, it has nothing to do with the fact that it, the guy's black and it's part of the social justice thing. I would cringe just as hard if this was a, uh, you know, a white man, a a, la, a Latino. <laughs> anyway, get, just moving on because this got real awkward. Um, so this is the real one I want to talk about. Uh, in fact, I want you guys to hear. I want you guys to hear the. Uh, so this guy wants a hundred thousand. Red Leopard. The animated series. Let's bring the leopard out of the shadows. So I have to stop screen sharing this for a minute so that I can screen share with audio. Um, I invite you guys to check it out with the uh, so you can hear it. Like I don't, I don't, I probably could get away with it, but the song is just really funny. <laughs> but I think it's like a, it is a way that we could lose, um, you know, get copyright flagged or whatever. Uh, so I'm not going to play that one. But he asks a, a very important question here. Have you guys ever wondered what a black dead fool would look like? Seriously. Have you guys ever wondered what a black dead fool with the audacity to whoop anybody and his punch is tremendously strong? If you were to get punched by Red Leopard, you just caught a tremendo punch. In fact, that's what you just caught a tremendo punch. Yeah. Huh? Did you guys hear that? <laughs> tremendo punch. How about this? <laughs> tremendo. So, uh, so he asked us a question. Have you ever thought of what um, a black Deadpool would look like? Do you know what the answer to that question is? No. No. Spawn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, <laughs> it's like less serious than Deadpool, I suppose. But, but no, less. Uh, oh, more serious. Sorry. 
Spot. Look at what fans are saying. Nice. Hope this will get popular. Love it. Super nice. JoJo be like, cool. Uh, I don't believe these are real people. <laughs> Especially since the naming schemes are all, well, not that one. I was going to say, like, uh, you know, adjective, uh, noun, three letters or three numbers, right? <laughs> anyway. All right. So, yeah, uh, uh, I don't have anything else to say about it. Uh, I just, I cringed and uh, it was, it was bad. Uh, continuing though, because I don't remember what else is in here. Oh yeah, I got I got a rescreen chair. Um, oh yeah, this piece of shit. Uh, so apparently there was a live action fan film for Bleach that was up on Kickstarter for a while uh, years ago that we never knew about that was supposed to have a Blu-ray and DVD. Um, it it was not doing well at all, and then kablooey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which, you know, somebody got on their account and said, yep, uh, in order for me to get the, what is this, $500, I'll put in another cool $465. I'll put in, I'll put in the rest of the funding myself just to get that money. Uh, <laughs> and then um, comments here. I'm glad that Kickstarter is okay with creators stealing money from backers. I will never back another project again because of this creator. Thank you for stealing our money. So well, things, are, things are going exceptionally well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, but, Jennifer, if you decided, uh, if you thought this might actually be plausible with a budget of $1,000, that's on you. Yeah. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to say this. Like, this is funny. Um, but on a, on a serious note, when it comes to like Kickstarters and any kind of crowdfunding thing, uh -huh. never put more than you're willing to just walk away with. Oh yeah, especially you know? since these people didn't put in a lot of money, except for whoever. Maybe maybe this was Jennifer, like a live action bleach. I put in six hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> considering bleach, <laughs> yeah, who would have the right to market and sell this? And then what? What is this? That's that's well, not. So it's supposed to be a nonprofit fan film, right? Um, and uh, here's your Ichigo. <laughs> <laughs> here's the main villain. <laughs> Their father and son. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> there you go. What the um, hell? Oh, God. Yeah. So, <laughs> look, I mean, kidding aside, I would totally love to have the Blu-ray of this that never got made. Uh, so, what in uh, what's his name? F2 Life Studios, if you actually put this out on Blu-ray, uh, hit me up and I will give you another... $22. $550 or whatever that was. <laughs> anyway, uh, so continuing. How many years ago bad. was this? Uh, uh, too many. All right, too so you guys know the game Among Us? Oh, damn it. There goes my mouse. <laughs> so okay. the game Among Us now has among the – there's like a um, – like a, what do you even call it? Like a ripoff? <laughs> Called Among the Creep. Uh, it's not getting very far. Still got days, a couple days ago uh, to go though, and uh, basically um, instead of you know going around and killing people like in Among Us, uh, you do lewd things, <laughs> try not to get caught taking pictures of upskirts. <laughs> I know. Uh, I'm and, actually surprised Kickstarter's allowing this on their yeah, platform. and it's and it's first person. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this just seems like the kind of thing they'd want to ban because that's the kind of people that run Kickstarter. Yep. Obviously, yeah. they're okay with this, though. Well, we, just watched one, <laughs> top here. we just watched one thing go up. What? We moved from six to seven. Oh. Yeah. What, what? Did it? And, and it was it? Wasn't it like ninety something a second ago? No, oh, did it just go up? Yeah, yeah. We we just watched it go up real one time. One of our yeah. live view Somebody... viewers clearly backed it. <laughs> Well, uh, I'll take my cut in the form of uh, 
super chat um, <laughs> affiliation link. I'm trying to. I'm looking everywhere for the name of whoever made this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. He doesn't, he doesn't want to post it just so he doesn't get yelled at on Twitter. I'll just rem- do the remind me. That way I can find it later and get his deets. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so yeah. Uh, so Reese, I got one in here for you though. What? Because your birthday is coming up. Oh no. I thought maybe you'd like promise to never corgi pins. Oh god. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Why? <laughs> what the fuck? So, Funded in thirty minutes. Yeah, um, I don't know what it is about the pin collecting, uh, like, community. Uh, when you type Why? in anime, everything is pins. It's just goddamn pins and animals. Like, because of anime, like, in some other language, spells out animal, apparently. Uh, yeah, so there you go. That is stupid. It is stupid. <clears throat> Which one do you want for your birthday? <laughs> I don't want... <laughs> None of them. <laughs> well, that's funny. Like, are they still going? Nine days to go. Yeah. Well, you you've only they've only yeah they've only unlocked two. So all these ones. <laughs> anyway, yeah. There you go. All right. Let's get into the actual show here. I guess. Hidden Human Nature Revealed in Homunculus Live Action Film Trailer. This is based on the psychological horror manga by Hideo Yamamoto. So, it's a thing. Cool. There you go. It is a thing. It's a noun. (laughs) Mugen Shinshi Manga's live action film adaptation gets theatrical release in early summer 2021. So, this is also a thing. You might have thought it was an action, but it's a thing. Um, Are we doing English lessons now? Mortal Kombat film, promisingly violent, and will finish "quote unquote" them. What? Uh, the nearly imminent Mortal Kombat movie, which seems to retell the original tale, has astounded longtime fans of the series, as the trailer seems to have a decent amount of promise, as it contains familiar characters and plenty of brutal fights. Critics have shown concern over the movie potentially forcing in pronoun culture, as there is a moment where Shang Tsung utters, finish them. And while he may have been referring to multiple people, the trailer cutting to one-on-one matches afterward, and the suspicious tweet issued by Jack's actor, suggests the them might have been added as part of a whole inclusivity narrative. We finished him. Her, they, theirs, and them. Hey, at least you didn't say zeer, right? <laughs> All right. So, yeah. the uh, In terms of looks, most of the trailer looks pretty freaking great. Like, I don't even like Mortal Kombat, and I'm kind of hyped to go see it. Um, <laughs> but, oh, God, all of the, hey, you remember this from the game, don't you? Moments, I was just like, cringe, no. <laughs> Get over here. (laughs) (laughs) Well, 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 you know, the one thing I will say is I was very disappointed that the trailer lacked um, any uh, Chun-Li representation. (laughs) You don't say because sexy women are illegal. (laughs) Feminist uh, publication Jezebel had this to say about the movie. Who forgot to invite Chun-Li to the Mortal Kombat? (laughs) Oh, and you know, full disclaimer, uh, that was a joke, by the way. I know Chun Li is uh, Fatal Fighter. Fury, not uh, Mortal yeah, Kombat. No. You're, you're ruining, Fighter, you're ruining my Fury. delivery of these jokes, I... Dan. <laughs> yeah, we, we were talking about this yesterday. Yes, I know. Straight yeah. Fighter. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Who forgot to invite Chun Li to Mortal Kombat? This is very bad journalism. Chun Li is from Tekken, not Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I'm a bad. <laughs> <laughs> to which I'm surprised. Chun Li is a Virtua Fighter character. The only street she knows is the pol- polygonal variety. Mortal Kombat has never used polygons. 
This clickbait article is extremely embarrassing and completely beneath any outlet attempting the slightest bit of journalistic integrity. You know what, guys? We need to make a porn parody called Mortal Combat. <laughs> <laughs> I think that exists, actually. <laughs> oh, I don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I already finish him. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> oh god! All right. So uh, Jezebel has this to say in their update at the end of their article. Jezebel has discovered the answer to our question about Chun Li's erasure, and it's that Chun Li is not part of Mortal Kombat. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Breaking news. Oh, so I will say this, you know, the feminists are always talking about how like the women in gaming get bullied. Like she's not a real gamer. So I always thought they were making that up because I didn't think people actually treated women that way for the most part, unless you're just an asshole and that's just, you know, Oh, you're not dealing with patriarchy. You're dealing with an asshole. That's what everybody deals with. You're just viewing it that way because you're a woman. Uh, but apparently they, we should start bullying women. <laughs> <laughs> Come <back. Well, laughs> it's, it's like, you know, they say that and then they do something like this and it's like, well, they're kind of proven the point of the critic. Yeah. Yeah. It's like one step forward, 10,000 steps back. <laughs> All right. It's so, like, uh, well, they're just bullying the, the women, calling us fake gamers. It's like, yeah, well, yeah. You, you can't. You, Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Like, you know, you don't know the difference. Like, come on now. Yeah. You're a hardcore gamer who plays... Uh, EverQuest or some shit. Like, yeah, it's like maybe, yeah, come maybe, on. That's a, that's a terrible example. Um, uh, we sports? I, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so anyway, uh, this shot in the movie trailer <laughs> gets such a laugh out of me. Uh, it looks so bad and so stock standard uh, effect. Uh, so occasionally, like, stuff looks good and then looks really bad. Um, Hiroyuki Sonata looks freaking great, but he's the only one who does. Um is this Taranobu? What's his name? Um, Asano? Mm -hmm. um, Taranobu Asano? Kaki, yeah. Kakihara? Yeah. So then there's this amazing part in the movie where Sub Zero slices a bunch of blood out of Scorpion and then freezes it into a dagger in the air. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So uh, looks like it's going to be pretty good. All right, well, let's not go too far down on that. <laughs> <Sankaku> <laughs> All, right. All right, so there you go. Um, uh, first impressions when? <laughs> uh, well, I, this time I won't be taking my kids to the drive-in. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that'd be a good idea. <laughs> for, all, for all of the above reasons. Okay, do you guys have anything you want to say? Any, any Mortal Kombat fans here? Yeah, I'll say is, uh, I mean, it looks good. I guess uh, I, I I'm, I'm one of the people that think that the original Mortal Kombat movie was actually a pretty decent video game movie. Actually, it was a pretty decent Mortal Kombat movie. Annihilation sucked balls. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll the first one we have to rewatch it. We'll definitely have to rewatch it before we, uh, before we see the movie in theaters. Um, this guy has about as much charisma as a block of wood. Um, and uh, it's a it's a shame that they're holding him up as like, is he going to be Johnny Cage or like what is he? I I have a funny feeling Johnny Cage is not going to be in the movie. Johnny Cage is still dead from the first two. <laughs> yeah, I, he, did he die in the first two? <laughs> he's a straight white chauvinistic oh, male. I, I imagine go. they're going to they'll introduce him and then kill him well, off. Kano's in, some, in like, it. <laughs> what? He's a ginger. I said Kano's in it, but he's a ginger. <laughs> yeah, but he's also a villain, so. Oh yeah, well, whatever. Uh, I you can tell how much I know about uh, about Mortal Kombat, which is uh, some of the characters' names some of the time. <laughs> uh, a fun fact about Kano actually is, um, uh, I believe he wasn't he wasn't meant to be an Australian guy or a New Zealand guy, whatever it was. He is now. It was actually mm -hmm. the '90s movie that made him out to that because he was so popular. Oh really? Yeah, That's they just kind of like okay. I think, anyways. 
Okay. He's got fun fact too, right? is not so much <laughs> fact as it is fun thing that I, I here's, I, here's I read something about I want to tell you guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, no, it's, it's cool. No, it's something that I think I read about like several years ago. Yeah. Well, yeah. I believe it. Anyway, um, so moving on from here, boy, these still still. So this is Tadanobu Asano for sure, because he I know he plays Raiden. I don't know who the heck this other guy is. That's probably Shang Tsung, right? That's got to be who that is. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, I feel a little bit better. I was going to say, Tadanobu Asano did not age nearly as well as Hiroyuki Sonata. Anyway, let's get out of Jezebel. <laughs> All right, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Season 1. Hunter Hunter Seasons 1 through 3 are leaving Netflix on March 7th. Happy birthday to me. So uh, if you... If you were here previously on the OCA podcast and heard us shame people for their bad taste and not buying physical, uh, checkmate, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All Alive Alternative Project materializes with stunning anime promo. Uh, so it says, quote, a variety of works will be released in line with the new project, uh, which means that basically um, – Pop-up shop, maid cafe. I don't know. It, what does this look like fucking America Online? What? The hell? Um, anyway, so yeah, I don't know what it's going to be. There is an anime like promotional video, but I don't think it's going to actually be an anime. Although I do recall that we talked about a VTuber multiverse anime, right? Like, anyway, there's a little bit more to it here, just so you can see some of the images. Um, yes, you did see several of these VTubers say the N-word on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't cancel, so it's okay. Yeah, we just promoted their uh, um, N-word usage. And we like Nigeria. Boy, this, this particular podcast right here is uh, like doing wonders for painting my relations with the black community. <laughs> it has not gone well tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Funimation gets domestic with Dragon Goes House Hunting TV anime. And then I'm I actually very curious to watching. find out. Yeah, I am too, actually. Um, to find out if I if that upload worked. Well, it, that's good enough for me. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. Okay. Back to. Sorry, my mouse is off screen. Just give me give me a momento. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I it's going to be weird. I'll watch it. It's going to be weird, though. Okay. It'll be marketable at, marketable at some level, so it's not going to be too weird. No, I just think it's going to be a weird premise. You know, Be the Beginning Succession to be released on Netflix on March 18th. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, that's a very unappealing forum. You've got there, T-1000. <laughs> <laughs> it's cobalt liquid cobalt I, I will be curious what numbers has better streaming uh, Snyder Cut and, or this thing which comes out on uh, the definitely the Snyder Cut <laughs> I mean if anybody saw this stupid like promotional thing they said really that's what they're doing with this character's arm <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah and the girl the girl who's tactically running to the point where it looks like she's about to fall over <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, I, I gotta step away for a moment, guys. He I has to tactically I'm... retreat. Okay. <laughs> you have to <laughs> tactically retreat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'll be yeah. I'll be back in a little bit, guys. I'll see you in a second. <laughs> Bye. Uh Netflix's Dota Dragon's Blood show focuses on the Dragon Knight. Um also focuses on looking like uh, a Marame trash. With high fidelity um, post effects. <laughs> da, 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 we're gay. That's what I get from that. <laughs> I hope he saves a princess. <laughs> um, yeah, so March 25th is when you can start watching this. It is from Mir Studios uh, of such amazing works as Voltron. Legendary Defender and Legend of Korra. So you know it's going to be trash going in. Um, there you go. That's the Netflix streaming news. 
Magical art journey begins in Oshiete Hokusai, or Teach Me Hokusai, the animation OP video. Okay, so um, it's got a cute art style. Uh, I like I like how they put it together. I believe it's 2D. Kind of gets a 3D feel in parts, but anyway, um, there's a thing. That, that is a thing. It's a web anime. <laughs> Go Go Godzilla Kun Puppet Show stomps a third season in March. Godzilla Kun. Um, hmm. What? Third season, and this was the first time ever hearing of this? Uh, yeah, it is a YouTube uh, thing. Latest installment will stream for 13 episodes on Toho's Godzilla channel on YouTube. Go, go, Godzilla Kun. <laughs> that looks like cancer. Yeah. <laughs> it needs uh, to go on the thumbnail. This, yeah, I was going <laughs> to say. I was gonna say this looks about as good as my uh, thumbnail for the last OCA podcast clip. <laughs> so just a freaking mess behind everybody. <laughs> I think it's close to. Nope, I'm good. Korean Final Fantasy 14 animated short welcomes us to Limza Lominza. Uh, so for some reason, the Korean YouTube channel has an anime short. Korea May. I don't know what you call that. <laughs> uh, <Man> Chinese, <laughs> a Chinese YouTube equivalent, Billy Billy, will crack down on problematic content. Hmm. Chinese YouTube equivalent, Billy Billy, is, pro is promising to crack down on, quote, problematic content present on their service following the whining that emerged over Mosho Mushoku Tensei. What's that? Jobless reincarnated? Yep. Jobless, re jobless reincarnation. Yep. Jobless reincarnation. Okay. Uh, which apparently also had multiple companies threatening to boycott Billy Billy for permitting posts that, quote, insult women. Some of the companies that allegedly said they would disavow Billy Billy include eye care brand Seago, cosmetic brand Ukiss, and sanitary napkins Sophie. <laughs> With said companies thankfully having the resources to soak up or conceal their tears. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> Who wrote that? <laughs> <Ripped. laughs> this so-called crackdown is being aided by the Cyberspace Administration of China and will quote punish content producers according to regulations and will keep the public posted. Hmm. Billy Billy was abhorred by uh Billy Billy was abhorred by many after those who are easily offended learned of the sexual shenanigans present in the anime known as Jobless Reincarnation, uh, Mushoku Tensei, such as the promiscuous nature of a certain father character, leading to critics labeling the show as, quote, disrespectful to women, and that it violates, quote, mainstream values and morals. It is said are you that sure Billy. About that? It is said that Billy Billy terminated an abundance of accounts belonging to female users who complained about the anime, though the service ended up suspending the anime regardless. Five other brands supposedly cut ties with Billy Billy as well, and according to an online poll, about 69,000 people believed the anime contained content that insulted women, while another 68,000 disagreed and asserted they had no problem with such content. Hmm. Well, the eyes have it, unfortunately. <laughs> so, furthermore, Mushoku Tensei removed from Billy Billy due to, quote, technical issues. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a great thought. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> the recent isekai series Mushoku Tensei has had its episodes scrubbed from the Chinese streaming platform Billy Billy. While the platform cites technical issues as the reason for the removal, some fans are reluctant to believe. Mushoku Tensei was subject to controversy in China allegedly after Chinese e-celebrities took offense to the show's content. Most notably, they expressed incredulity at how anyone could enjoy a show where the protagonist is a, quote, loser. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, how does anybody enjoy our show? <laughs> uh, discussions of the show's removal from Billy Billy and the motives were discussed heavily on the My Anime List forums. 
In the thread, one user explained that one Chinese influencer allegedly went as far as to say, quote, normal people don't watch Mushoku Tensei because they don't need to earn satisfaction from a loser. Only garbages watch that show. <sighs> well, as one of those garbages, I will be watching this show. <laughs> I am one of those garbages who's watching it and enjoying it. Thank you very much. Yeah. How I do we am um, one of those garbages we, who's read it? How do we Partial. cancel the e celebrities by being offended that they called us garbages? <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh what I mean so so uh I mean garbages, that's not a word, it's just garbage, right? Yeah. Gra Only yeah, garbage gra watch that. We, we gotta get the show. grammar Jew hammer out. Oh man. <laughs> Gonna send him to grammar schwitz. That didn't work. Okay. Um, moving on. Such extreme <laughs> criticism could be levied at the show due to the performative activism encouraged by China's, quote, social credit system. <laughs> the Chinese Communist Party aligned Global Times went on to misrepresent the content of the show and claimed, quote, the lead character uses psycholony to give his underage niece an orgasm. What? Uh, There's all sorts of things wrong what? with this sentence. What? So, psycholony, uh, let me put it this way, you know, like psychokinesis, telekinesis, pyrokinesis, oh, right? So, pyrokinesis is the ability to start fires with concentration, effectively, right? Psycholony is the ability to achieve orgasm, trying to almost ejaculate, what do I say? Uh, orgasm through mental stimulation alone. Is, are they talking about that scene that had an aphrodisiac in it? That had well, here's the thing. It? Not only are they wrong, <laughs> but you don't use, psych, as far as I understand the term, you don't use psycholony to give other characters uh, the orgasm. It is something, it is a technique a person does on their own to themselves. So, uh, failed English again after garbages. Um, so while the series has lecherous comedy, this event, referring to the uh, psycholony and the underage niece, yeah. this event never happens in the show. The protagonist, before he gets reincarnated, doesn't even attend the affirma aforementioned funeral. Okay, now, see, I told myself, I told myself that I would pay very close attention on the podcast because I don't recall when I first read this article the word funeral being aforementioned in this article i have no idea what they're talking about huh. i don't get this what funeral there's a funeral at the very in the very first episode and the family members go to the house the dude's just jerking off to video games and they basically <laughs> beat the shit out of him and kick him out of the house and then that's when he gets ran over by a car oh because he's out on the street so is that is his niece only part of this the portion of I don't the, know who this niece is. I don't Are they talking this. about his uh probable uh uh sibling later? I have no idea. Well, anyway, setting that aside, uh the protagonist before he gets reincarnated doesn't even attend the aforementioned funeral, let alone somehow psychically give his niece an orgasm. Between the intense criticism and the convenient, quote, technical difficulties Billy Billy is facing, it's reasonable to speculate that the show has been unofficially banned by Billy Billy, if not China itself. Well, good. Communists don't need to good entertainment. <laughs> Mushoku Tensei anime removed from China's Billy Billy likely due to lacking morals. So I believe I highlighted something here. No, I guess I didn't. I guess we'll just read it quickly. Uh, China has found another anime to censor for daring to, quote, lack morals, not unlike the deranged activists in the West. As Mushoku, as Mushoku Tensei Isekai Itara Hon Honki De Dasu. I like that. Honki Dasu. Hon Honki Desu? <laughs> Is that the thing that I've been hearing in every anime ever? Honki Desu? <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, so, as jobless reincarnation has been expunged from viewing on Chinese YouTube of Kuma Billy Billy, a decision brought about by the anime's abundance of, quote, filthy scenes. Viewers labeled the anime as unsuitable for young watchers and accused it of wow. violating mainstream values and morals. 
Some, however, expressed that the platform is at fault for not age-restricting the show. The animation was temporarily suspended at the time of the fifth at the time the fifth episode was set to arrive, which Billy Billy explained was due to quote technical reasons. On review sites like Dobon, uh, Jobless Reincarnation was given a three. This is the part I was going to read actually. Was given a three point nine out of ten rating, but on <laughs> Billy Billy, the anime the anime was much more revered with a nine point two out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what is it on uh, my anime list has an average of 8.38. Now, if you ask well, we gotta, me, it hasn't finished. You got to get that to the number one spot. So just like, just like I don't feel like people years. can uh, properly rate it and evaluate it when it's not even finished. Because, you know, I, literally the, the second half of the series could just be like, you know, everyone dies. As, literally everything's as, reversed. No, nothing happens. No one cares. As far as I'm concerned... Uh, anything that makes woke outrage mob culture lose their shit is an is automatic ten out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I gave interspecies reviewers an eight. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I don't think I need to read the uh, the rest of this. Actually, um, it's great that my my highlight remained on here, so I remembered what to talk about and didn't waste any time. But uh, you guys want to say anything about it um, other than like? You know, obvious obviously. thing is obvious. China's China. Yeah. So Shin Shingeki no Kyojin, a.k.a. Attack on Titan, is the hottest TV show in the U.S., according to Parrot Analytics. Mikasa's about to pop right out of that top, too. <laughs> Jesus. Um, according to data gathered by Parrot Analytics, Attack on Titan's fourth season has become the most coveted show in the West, with anime being a rather rare type of show to be yearned to be yearned for, as can be judged by the other series on the list. So, um, well, the fourth and supposedly final season of Shingeki no Kyojin uh, commenced back in December and is still continuing into the month into the month of February. Per analytics, the other sisters, blah, blah blah. So here's the chart. So Attack on Titan is getting. Uh, are these in millions? Difference from the average title one. What is the fuck? Okay, well, it's, it's it's exceptional, along with its peers, SpongeBob SquarePants and Saturday, Saturday Night, Night Live. Live. And, <laughs> wow, My Hero Academia is losing to, to Saturday Night Live. Uh, Cobra Kai, uh, The Mandalorian, Mandalorian, WandaVision, Game of Thrones. People are still watching, apparently. Stranger <laughs> Things and The Office, which has been over for years. <laughs> well. Uh, competition okay. is fierce and yeah uh, can't wait for the can't wait for the franchises to uh, recognize the potential and get our spongebob attack on titan crossover going <laughs> <laughs> oh god attack on mr krabs <laughs> attack on the grabby patty <laughs> <laughs> because Plankton's the only one that fits, right? Everybody else is a Titan. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, all right. Batting a thousand with all of these uh, articles I didn't uh, pre-read. All right, I got one with highlights. Uh, so the Japanese box office, a Kai family. Actually, you know, I don't even need to read this because um, this literally is something I'm going to bring up in the next article. So, um, yeah. So the Detective um, Conan compilation film makes its second place debut. So it's in it's in second place, right? Uh, Demon Slayer Mugen Train increases Japan box office lead to more than thirty seven point seven billion yen. Hmm. For fuck's sake, did I not highlight? Oh no! Oh, God, what is wrong with me? Okay. So this means that, as usual, Demon Slayer Mugen Train has brought in another three... No, no, no it's not this. It's, uh, it's this one. Worldwide, Demon Slayer Mugen Train has increased its box office takings to U.S. $397.3 million thanks to another strong week from South Korea where the anime film totaled blah, blah, blah. Who cares? This means that in U.S. dollars, this is what was important. Mugen Train has passed, spirited away, as the highest grossing anime film worldwide. But, but due to them both being Japanese films and the difference between the U.S. dollar and Japanese yen from when Spirited Away was first released in 2001 to now, Mugen Train is still in second place against Spirited Away's Mammoth 
$395,580,000 because of the difference between how much the yen was worth back then. Um, Mugen Train will, will be able to claim the top spot when the 2020 film passes the Hayao Miyazaki classic in Japanese yen. So, there you go. Hmm. Doesn't that mean that, it, that yen was worth less back then? And therefore, yeah, I think that's actually what that means. Anyway, there you go. Memorial hosted his new anime film, Bell, teased in first trailer. Uh, so there's a thing. Um, and if you look at this and say, oh, he's doing Beauty and the Beast, um, nope. I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> but apparently apparently that's not what they're bait and switching me. No, 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 no. With. It's be Beauty and the Whale. <laughs> beauty beauty and the uh, Dark Web. Um, all this time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Final Evangelion movie uh, movie's runtime leaked, and it's the series longest by far. Cool. Okay. Well, there's stuff there's stuff to read. Um, because you want to know how long it is, right? How hard is it? That's the question. So, films uh, that are being played theatrically theatrically in Japan have to register the work with ARIN, the country's film classification and rating. Uh, organization. According to a briefly public listing for Thrice Upon a Time, the fourth and final rebuild installment will be two hours and 34 minutes long. Mm -hmm. That's nearly one more. That's nearly one hour more than any of the six previous Ava movies, which have had runtimes of Death and Rebirth at one hour 40 minutes, The End of Evangelion at one hour 27 minutes. Hold on. Oh. Okay. Dan says he's going to be away a little longer. Um, rebuild 1 at 1 hour 38 minutes. Rebuild 2, 1 hour 48 minutes. Rebuild 3, 1 hour 36 minutes. So, yeah, it's an hour longer than those. And I think it's the third longest anime movie. Uh, behind... Like Final Yamato, The Here. Disappearance of Haruki yeah. Suzumiya. Um, yep, that's it. That's it. Making it the third longest anime film ever after the 70 millimeter version of Final Yam Yamato and The Disappearance of Haruki Suzumiya. Uh, and then they went on to say, updated. A 2021 showing titled Neon Genesis Evangelion Death True to Air Mago Koro o Kimi Ni known as Revival of Evangelion in the West, was shown in January 2021 for a limited time and ran for 160 minutes. The showing combined the Death True 2 compilation film from the original series and the Holy end of crap. Evangelion. Holy crap, can they like, name things uh, right? <laughs> adequately? <laughs> Into one package. The compilation film was previously shown in 1998 with an intermission between the Death True 2 section and the end of Evangelion sections. So effectively, they are wrong. It's not the longest Ava film yet if you consider them showing two films <laughs> as one film. <laughs> There you go. All right. Netflix offering full Tokyo anime school scholarships with living expense support, and it's open to foreigners. Hey, look, it's Lance. Are you doing Duck King? He's doing very mutely. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we're happy to have you here. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got you. I'm meeting the stream. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Also, the the case gang. I think they were completing the final season numbers. Oh, like the final season of The Office, final season of Game of Thrones, final season of SpongeBob, final oh. season of, of uh, what do you call it? Um, Saturday Night Live? <laughs> awesome. No, no way is it getting that much viewership. <laughs> Surprised it's beating the final season of Game of Thrones. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How the F is Attack on Titan getting beaten by Game of Thrones? No. Um, it, Attack on Titan was number one. Oh. Game of Thrones is towards the bottom of that list. Yeah, yeah. I was I was sitting here. Go ahead. Continue. Well, I assume compared to the average viewership of the previous seasons of the particular shows, 
I thought your name already eclipsed Grid away. Maybe that was only yeah. So this is worldwide um, for the Mugen Train thing. We're looking at the worldwide box office, um, meaning like outside of Japan included. Yeah. Beauty and the Whale. Finish that song. <laughs> Finish, <laughs> finishing. <laughs> it's the longest one. <laughs> Um, okay. All right. So, yeah. So, Netflix is offering full Tokyo anime school scholarships with living expense support open to foreigners. The streaming giant teams up with Attack on Titan and Ghost in the Shell Studios for a course designed by Studio Ghibli veteran. Pretty much as soon as it arrives in Japan, Netflix made anime a major pillar of its content mix. No doubt emboldened by the success anime found uh, on streaming platforms outside Japan, Netflix has continued to expand its presence within the Japan anime industry, most recently with Thick Thighed Godzilla. God oh damn it. God. I I should have pulled up. <laughs> oh, my God. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Baby got back? <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> Can't wait for that porn parody. <laughs> you know, I, I can't wait. Thank you very much. <laughs> With that said, I will be right back. I'm gonna... All right. Okay. So, uh, most recently with Thick Thighed Godzilla. And now it doesn't want to just be involved in creating animation, but animators too. Wit Studio, best known for its work on the first three seasons of Attack on Titan, has announced the formation of the Wit Animator Academy hosted at the Sasayuri Video Training Institute, which is also called the Sasayuri Cafe for some reason, in Tokyo's Nishi, uh, Nishiogi Kubo neighborhood. The program will be a six-month course with classes held five days a week, and following completion, students will be retained as subcontracted animators for a Netflix original anime to be produced by Wit Studio or its sister studio production IG. So how it much will the course... It will look terrible because everyone's a newbie. As... As someone who understands grammar, I have problems with their wording there for the simple fact, if you look at what they said, they said they're creating animators. They're going to be making a lot of babies. Yeah. So, they're nurturing uh, so, is what they're doing. So how much will the course cost students? Not a single yen. Netflix is footing the bill as a scholarship and is even pledging to help students uh, help students out with their living expenses during the program making this the coolest thing they've done since that giant anime I ad in Shinjuku Station. Okay. For Devilman Crybaby. Obviously, such generosity means the program size is limited. And for the first batch of students, Wit and Netflix are looking for about 10 people. On the plus side, that also means small class sizes with more opportunities for student slash teacher interaction. Hmm. Speaking of instruction, the WIT, uh, the WIT Animation Academy curriculum is being developed by Hitomi Tateno, who worked for 25 years as an animation checker for Studio Ghibli, making sure the art moved fluidly and artistically in anime classics, including Kiki's Delivery Service, How's Moving Castle, Spirited Away, and then the link to another article, My Neighbor Totoro. Tateno also will also serve as an instructor for the program. He also worked on Akira, uh, according to the uh, Crunchyroll version of this article. The first Wit Animator Academy course will start in April and run until September. Applicants must be between age 18 and 25 years old and have granted and have graduated, not gra gra gradated, from high school no later than March of 2021. While Japanese residency is required, non-Japanese citizens, i.e. foreign residents of Japan, are welcome to apply. And full Japanese language fluency is not a must as long as applicants are able to have everyday conversations in Japanese. Applicants can be made, applications can be made online between now and February 28th here through the WIT Animator Academy website with practical skill exams and interviews as well as final uh, as final selection of successful candidates taking place in March. Okay, so a little extra news here. Motherfucker, where are my fucking uh, highlights? Okay, well, Netflix is going to dish out uh, $5,720 for each student as their tuition and a stipend of basically a fourth of that each month for your living expenses. 5000 
yeah, the tuition is only five thousand dollars, <laughs> almost almost six thousand. That sounds unreal, but all right. That sounds like basically what uh, it costs for my education. That's a that's about how much money an animator in Japan makes in a whole year. <laughs> that's that right there is not even two months at a private school here for one child. Okay, and so so I've got I've got wow. uh, <laughs> first of all. First of all, Christopher Barker says, back that ass up. <laughs> he says, some say this will ruin anime going forward, as it will include SJW agendas. I think that's reactionary's diarrhea. But on the other hand, I told you so. Well, my friend, allow me to just say, Production IG, we must focus on shows that will do well internationally. <laughs> you were saying. <laughs> uh, so let's read what this says. An article detailing the success of Kimetsu no Yaiba, as well as the business practices of both Sony and Netflix, and how they intend to build a global audience for maximum revenue growth, contained a quote from Production IG's senior vice president disclosing a fact that might dismay some anime enthusiasts. The rather thorough article discussed at length Sony's perspective transitioning into that of a global one, as well as the similar performance of competitors such as Amazon Prime and Netflix. It is said in the article that a critical line is about to be crossed. That being when more than half of the revenue, when more than half of the revenue made by anime is from outside Japan. Critical infection, criti a critical inflection point where more than half of anime revenues are generated outside of Japan is about to be crossed. Corporate Japan's frenetic last decade of outbound M&A acknowledged that uh, in a shrinking domestic market, growth must come from overseas. Anime is now tentatively doing the same. All right. To all the chads in the audience, if you want to save anime, you need to get to Japan and knock out, knock up, <laughs> knock out, knock up as many bitches as you can. <laughs> I mean, the problem, the problem I have with, no problem with this, but. <laughs> the problem here is that uh, the, the declining birth rates are causing the, uh, the audience, um, uh, pool to shrink in Japan. Maybe maybe it's because Japanese people, you know, aren't like Western people who are so fuck. I was told to watch my cussing. Fucking, <laughs> By who? Um, are so <laughs> are so fucking pent up and stupid that they go out and they freaking get everyone pregnant they possibly can. That's why there's more child support being paid than there are people paying taxes. Hmm. That's, That's not true, answer. but it feels, <laughs> but it feels that way anymore. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. So I don't know that I would call this "quote unquote" SJW agenda, um, but it was the segue I chose to run with. Uh, I will say though that if Kimetsu no Yaiba is the stock standard for how they want anime to be, um, cool. Wait, Kimetsu no Yaiba is Demon Slayer, right? Yeah. Yes. Then, oh. Yeah. Then. Uh, My buddy. Well, Demon I'll Slayer tell you this much: show, we're never but... gonna get another Juden Chan. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. Any more anime like Ushio and Tora? Mm. Go back to the oh. good shit. All right, so let's 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 power through this real quick. Um. Oh. George Wada, the senior vice I president know. of production IG, noted that sticking to Japan is difficult and that the company's focus should shift to content that will resonate internationally. It is difficult to operate a business solely in Japan anymore. Instead of a, instead of a two-stage process where we deliver titles that were hits in Japan to the rest of the world, we must now focus on content that will resonate not only in Japan, but internationally. Such a remark is a cause for concern for those familiar with the pandering state of most of the entertainment industry in the West. Critics are worrying that this may lead to more censorship of the source material or dumbing things down in order to avoid offending people. Uh, yeah, so absolutely. So we'll never down, see another more, more show like, like Mushoku Tensei. Yeah, say so this is the final season of anime. Everything after this time. <laughs> now. Um, yeah, anime, anime no longer exists after, after that yeah. happens. So there we go. Uh, so I, that suicide pack is still going strong, right? We're all on board with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> boys followed their gymnastic streams in Bakuten, um, which to me, I can't tell if it's a less gay or more gay Yuri on Ice. 
How can you get more gay than your own ice? Interesting that we're getting another Genesis anime right after Genesis Samurai. Right. Uh, Aki Hamazi's girl rock band manga, Bochi the Rock, gets TV anime adaptation. Is it just um, me or did... Go ahead, sorry. It was no, 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 last comment. Go ahead, go ahead, Is it just me or did... Uh, like sports anime, like go nuts at right after yeah. the Olympics were in Japan. Seems seems like they're coming out with more and more and more and more. Or am I just noticing them more? Uh, no, I think I think there's been an influx. Um, I think Netflix is partially to blame for that because they had uh, high Q, and I think that that's sort of taken off a lot. <laughs> Continuing, the Slime Diaries TV anime notes April 6th premiere date. So, yeah. wow, another slime anime with a character with the same color hair. And, uh, and from what it, I understand, it's Ringer. No, it, it's the spinoff of the. Oh, show. okay. I was going to say, like. This is, this, is not, this is not new news. The news out of this is the date. It's the a specific premiere date. Date. Okay. I was going to say. I've seen I, I've I haven't been... watched. I haven't watched. That, uh, that time I got that reincarnated. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. slime. Yep. Uh, I'm ready. My I'm body is ready. Manga, by the way, so the first volume. You can totally tell I read this. Slime yeah. Diaries TV anime is related spinoff of the that time ago. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I'm just glad it's getting a. I'm just glad there's only been a like maybe what two or three volumes released. There are you getting a spinoff anime. Yeah. Battle athletes dying Dokai restart second PV announces April tenth, twenty twenty one premiere date. So there you go. You can finally watch it, and we'll find out if it's woke garbage. They turn. Or if it's they turn asleep garbage. Well, they're gonna. We're gonna see what they do with the character that was raised as a female to be able to compete against the females. What if it'd be so part? fucking funny? So fucking funny. No, the type ones to, to go against other type ones. Well, it would just be so funny if they just make that character like completely dominate the the rest of them to make it more realistic. I'm I'm curious now. So you're saying that there's a dude who's raised as a girl to be yeah to be because for some reason the the competition is only open to girls. So you find out in one of the original series that uh, that one of the girls is actually a guy who's been raised as a girl and doesn't realize that that they aren't a girl. Um. And well, that's awful. probably yeah, probably the weakest guy in the world to to not be able to compete in an athletics program against women, uh, <laughs> because when when um, when Olympic athletes, uh, female Olympic athletes, can't beat the records placed by high school males, <laughs> um, I mean it's just genetic differences, right? But I uh, can't wait to watch this turn into oh, let's help him transition or whatever instead of what it was in the original story. Huh. Fafner in the Azure OVA soars towards its final three episodes. So that stuff's still going. I know, right? Like it wasn't good mean? originally. How is it still <laughs> going? <laughs> I, mean, I haven't seen it to comment, but um, I thought that like the new series just like already all of tended. the people who review shit in China. You're doing fine. Yep. <laughs> Simpho Gear and Uta no Prince Sama creator teases a new series. Um, God knows what it's going to be. It says A1 Pictures, though, so it's probably an anime. A1 Pictures in Aniplex USA? <gasps> C's final light, sorry, C's fantasy light novel in the land of Lee Dale gets anime adaptation. I'm back in just a second. Going to be at water. She doesn't look like a compelling uh, main character, but maybe it's good. I don't know. Uh, Tokyo Mew Mew new anime set for 2022. Staff and cast revealed. Um, honestly, I should just be highlighting the name of the show because the rest of the stuff is completely unimportant. There's a new Tokyo Mew Mew. Isn't that great? I'm mean, sure. Uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm Tsushima the Cat <laughs> manga series claws in summer 2021 TV anime. So uh, there you go. <laughs> I probably won't be watching this. I'm not a cat person. I'm allergic anyway. I'm a cat person <laughs> and allergic, so get wrecked, scrub. <laughs> I want to eat your pancreas novel illustrator directs short anime film Summer Ghost. 
Uh, that's the news. There you go. Just powering through these. Boys Soccer Club joins the cast of Farewell, My Dear Kramer TV Anime. Um, yeah, so the boys uh, don't look nearly as weird as the, the girls do in this show. <laughs> as evidenced by the previous articles we covered on it. Dropkick on my devil to get new extra episode, Chapter Kushiro, thanks to Hometown Tax. So I think we've talked about this in the past. I think we even talked specifically about this show and the original uh, Hometown Tax that got the other episode. Yep. Um, but just to uh, detail it a little further... Inspired by the success of the Chitose City Project, Kushiro City has managed to acquire the funds for a second bonus Joshin Chan Dropkick, or Dropkick on My Devil, episode through the Furu's Sato Noze system, with more Joshin Chan only serving as a positive thing for dedicated fans of the Topless Monster Girl series. Hokkaido's Kushiro City hosted its own project using the Furusato Noze system and managed to accrue its goal of 30 million yen. Okay, so Furusato Noze is hometown tax. Uh, so basically what you're able to do – well, actually, I think it looks you. They'll, they'll probably – I'll explain if they, yeah, they, I think they say it there. I'll just read it. So those who donated at least 50,000 yen will be sent a Blu-ray disc of this bonus episode and have their names in the credits, while those who, don who donated over 30,000 yen will merely be sent a Blu-ray, which will ship in July. The, fru the Furusato Noze system allows Japanese citizens to donate money toward a project whilst making them exempt from some of their taxes. This is you. This is also usually done as a way for those in urban areas to contribute to rural areas, with cities sending local products to the donors as thanks. So basically, um, you get to write off donations on your taxes. And the third What's season the is going to air. Because I came back drop, right drop after kick, that? Drop kick on my devil. Oh, I thought you called it topless monster girls. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, yeah, because she's, she's topless. Oh. Right? So, so oh. they said... They said serving as a positive thing for dedicated fans of the topless monster girl series because she's topless. I mean, her, her, her stuff is covered by her hair, obviously. I anyway. did not know topless monster girls was a genre. <laughs> Your interest has been peaked. Uh, FDM, you here? No. This is the best damn show this season. Rom-com manga Horamiya publishes final chapter next month. What? After well, nearly it's a like decade, 15 or whatever volumes, it's been oh, okay. going on for a while. Yeah. The hero written Daisuke Hagiwara drawn manga comes to an end. The illustrative Haramiya manga series Daisuke Hagiwara announced on his Twitter account today that the manga series, which is written by Hero, whoever the fuck that is, and based on the earlier four coma web manga series by Hero, will be coming to an end next month. With the final chapter of the, of the romantic comedy series being published in April 20, uh, 2021 in the April 2021 issue of Monthly G Fantasy, the horror Mia oh. manga series has been adapted into a live-action film and TV drama, both premiering February 2021, with the TV anime series by director Masashi Ishihami at Cloverworks being released earlier in January. Yen Press is releasing the manga in English, blah, blah, blah. You guys already know all this stuff. I'm not even going to bother reading it. So there you go. Sorry that your show's ending uh, in manga form, but hopefully it gets a full well, adaptation. Mind, we well, that's actually a first. good thing because it could get a full ad adaptation later. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. So uh, I want to address uh, Miss the Days of Anime Being Niche Yet. Yes, I have personally, Me I have too. never advocated for the mainstreaming of anime. I've, I've been against it from the beginning. What are you sending me? This? What are you sending me? The FDM? Should I be opening these things you sent me? Oh, those are for release oh, those news. Are for, okay, so maybe maybe Reese should open those then, so that they're uh, Reese. Check the uh, yeah check yeah the, the private chat. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, and then also too many horny people in the states. Oh, for the sex and everybody up and having kids. Yeah. Um. There you go. Spitting truth on this podcast. <laughs> uh, Yen Press announces Bungo Stray Dogs Beast spinoff manga and more. Um. So there you go. Beast and Skeletor. I don't know. I'm still I'm still fanboying over uh, for me right now. All right. Mm -hmm. Angel Sanctuary author in rehab 
after hospitalization, current manga to go on hiatus. Author Kaori Yuki's Beauty and the Beast in the Fallen Garden tentatively scheduled to return this summer. Well, it was so popular that you had to come into this with the Angel Sanctuary <laughs> thing because nobody knew what that was. The Palsy Manga app, joint, jointly managed by Kodansha and Pixiv, has announced on Twitter that Angel Sanctuary author Kaori Yuki's current manga, Beauty and the Beast in the Fallen Garden, will be placed on hiatus due to her recent hospitalization and near death owing to an illness that was not revealed. COVID. Uh, the notice also confirmed that she remains hospitalized and is undergoing rehab. What kind of illness means you have to do rehab? Drug addiction. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it, but he's right. In a separate tweet, Yuki confirmed that she has progressed from using a walker to using a cane. Did she have? Would she have fucking like freaking? Um, God damn it! Stupid brain. Um, hey guys, is my crunching coming through? Your what? Forking. Your forking is coming through. Isn't that Reese? Oh no, it's me. Let me. I am done now. I'm sorry. Yeah, Reese's forking was coming through. I'm I, I don't think we fucking. Heard. Spaghetti and oh, no, I'm yeah. I'm using chopsticks with Cheetos puffs. Oh my god! Oh my god! Half gallon <laughs> jug. That was tasty. I'm done. You're welcome. <laughs> Damn it! This joke is like a million miles away from the punchline now, and I'm still trying to remember what it's called. Cerebral palsy. <laughs> to, no, no, not palsy. The thing FDR had. That they that Jonas Salk made the first vaccine for smallpox. What is it? Fucking Jesus Christ! Never mind. This joke is AIDS? too far. <laughs> too far yeah. she, she's rehabbing from AIDS that took her ability to walk. That's what it is. Okay. All right. Jesus Christ! Why? My why am I not? My vision. <sighs> all right. Well, Apparently. anyway, I don't know why I covered this at all. Or dyslexia or anything. <laughs> Honestly, if I made a little bit more money on the podcast and could take an extra day off of work, uh, I would totally actually a read little? these. <laughs> um, Demon Slayer creator Polio. Koyo Polio. Thank God. Thank you. Oh, that thank joke would have been. Castro. That joke would have been. <laughs> thank you. That joke would have been great. Like you know, an hour ago when I was trying <laughs> to come up with it. Demon Slayer creator yeah. Ko Koyo Haru Gotoge. What's up? Random eleven with a in a close second, less than a minute difference. You cast for the young PP of this podcast. Yeah, we'll say we've we'll, been, we'll we'll say been better earlier, but yeah. <laughs> Damn, All right, what is guys. this screen I'm looking at? Oh, okay. So, um, the the creator of Demon Slayer is the first manga to make the Time One Hundred Next list, whatever the fuck that is. It lists celebrities, artists, leaders, advocates, and innovators. Well, if Greta Thunberg is on this list, then I don't want to be. <laughs> Um, let's see. It's great for you to have linked it there like you, like an idiot. No, I don't want time. I want this link. I want to see the full time list. Give me the list. Show me your list. About the list. What the fuck is that first phrase? Okay. What the hell? Uh, no, oh, let's yeah. get that shit. Oh, these are important people here. Little baby. Hey, look, it's Michael. <laughs> uh, wait, who is that? <laughs> um, Killer Mike is a look at that guy important. right there. He's freaking posing for the camera. These aren't candid shots. Look at uh, that I guy. don't even fucking. I don't Demon know Slayer any of these people on here. are. Demon Slayer creator's not even on this list. I don't is, this, is this Gotoge right here? Is this what he looks like? <laughs> None of these people look what like What is this? Toriyama. I don't. That's yeah. This is weird. This list sucks. <laughs> you should feel bad. Is this it's in the time. bottom you ten should, list? <laughs> you should feel bad for being on this list, a Demon Slayer creator. <laughs> All right. That's okay. I thought Demon Slayer so creator I, made that list. I'm not gonna. Um, I'm not gonna read this. Like, I, I just want you guys to know Finally. about it. Official Super Mario 35th anniversary theme song is filled with Easter eggs. Non gamers will miss. Um, it's filled with Easter just, eggs. Just check on the song. It's so, it's so you don't been shake like it's 
it's been the uh, the hit that my whole house has been dancing to for a week. It's so good. Um, my son, who loves Mario, is like always wants it to be played and everything. It's it's great. Like I'm legitimately impressed with the Japanese ability to incorporate things without it being on the nose. So good. I haven't heard uh, okay. this. You're making me curious. Do you remember podcast 42? No. Almost 100 podcasts ago. Metal Gear Solid to become a board game. The well, board game has been well. licensed to IDW Games and is scheduled for release at some point in 2019. Remember this? Who calls it all? <laughs> Metal Gear Solid board game release plans canceled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm gonna IDW, go all good things are canceled. IDW originally planned to launch the project later this year. Not sure how that works. Um, so the Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid, the board game, was originally announced as a cooperative game for one to four players that would have that would have would be infiltrators attempting to work together to sneak into a nuclear weapons facility Depending. and stop a group of terrorists as Solid Snake, Meryl Otacon, and Gray Fox slash um, Cyber Cyborg Ninja. Uh, as fun as the tabletop take on Hideo Kojima's original PS One entry sounds, creator Emerson. Matsuchi recently confirmed that the project has been canceled. IDW was set to publish the board game this year, but ended up closing down production back in December, according to Matsushi. The decision came after a few delays, first from early 2019 to summer 2020, then back to 2021. IDW said that they needed more time to, to implement changes before the game could be finalized, but... Quote, ultimately, the amount of time it took to implement these changes just grew longer than expected, and our window to ship the game on time closed. Um, how the fuck does it take you this long to make a damn board game? You know, I could do it in an afternoon with Microsoft Word. <laughs> like, Jesus. <laughs> this might not necessarily spell the end for the game, however, Matsushi said. Uh, Matsushi said he offered to, to help fund the last leg of the project himself and even attempted to buy out IDW's interest in it and purchase all assets. While that didn't quite work out as planned, Matsushi is now hoping to acquire the Metal Gear Solid license from Konami and keep the dream alive. So there I feel, I feel is... Like this could have been made in someone's basement and then be like, hey guys, yeah. it's done. Like I just, I am dumbfounded that... I, I don't even know. How do you mismanage something this badly? I mean, there's literal there's little shit for free on the internet that you could you're literally <laughs> like, oh here here is a rectangular template. Add picture and huh. color from license. What? Randall Random Eleven says uh, E Castro must have better ping huh. because it shows it shows my comment above in in his uh, version of the stream huh. when he Okay. Well there you go. Uh, and also canceled, oh dear. Um, hey, Chad, can y'all hear me crunching? Because if you can, I'll come to Mike. You. you sound fine. All right. So Pyra and oh. Mithra both censored as they jump into Super Smash well, Brothers. Definitely Ultimate. do. So um, yeah, so censored means that they put tights on the character. Oh. And covered up the cleavage. <laughs> Which, if oh, they're the, talking the about coming to Smash. Pyra yeah. and Mithra from the boob window, from um fucking uh, the game where Xenoblade Two. Xenoblade Two. Xenoblade. Family. Thank you. It's the same. Uh, God, yeah, I can't remember that other name. guy. The one that yeah, the one that has some meter. That guy. Yeah, him. No, so, no, 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 no. That he's, he's from the name. first one. <clears throat> he meant the Shulk. franchise. Shulk. Whatever. Anyway, it's called, <laughs> yeah, Shulk. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah. I'll say this about the concept of censorship. I don't, I, this is not the same thing as censoring an adaptation. This is taking a game that's probably rated T for teen and putting the characters from that T for teen game in a game that's rated E for everyone or something like that. I have the game over here. I can check the rating. <laughs> but you, you get what I'm saying is that they're, they're trying to take something that was, that was, <laughs> 
Okay, first of, all, first of all, first of all, they have no right. They have no right to do that. <laughs> like, because have you even played Smash and looked at like, if you go back to uh, Melee and stuff, like hell, there were ups. Yeah, you could like rotate. Yeah, panties. you could rotate the camera around. And see I'm like, okay. Check out Dan's team for T for Titty. <laughs> so anyway, yes, what I'm what I'm getting really... at though, what I'm getting at though, is that they're they didn't release it uncensored with boob window and then retroactively go back and uh, no, alter no, it. No, no, no. What, I, what I'm saying, this is kind of like when we talked about how the Japanese Blu-rays for the Dragon Ball Z movies, they removed the middle finger when like Trunks is flipping off Bio Broly and whatnot or whatever. <laughs> um, and it's like the reasoning behind it was when they made it back in the day the audience for dragon ball z skewed a little higher but just like demon slayer oh fuck a bunch of kids are watching this can't have them flipping off their parents right um so i think that that's what's going on here yeah, they watch and they watch any sitcom on tv that they can flip to in this well, well let me let me finish this up so I, I think that that's what's going on here but the problem with this is that it almost guarantees that because these characters came to Smash and this is their new look, <laughs> that this game series that is going to get a big boost from the collaboration of Smash is now going to be kidified going forward. At least that's what I expect. Nintendo made Xenoblade, so I don't know why they'd be like, we got to dumb it down since we're now popular from our own game inside our own game. <laughs> Well, I'm I mean, just saying. I'm, I'm gonna put it like I this. think this is a this is an unintended consequence of collaborative efforts for ni bringing niche titles into non niche things. <laughs> so, um, and it, I, I'm using I, this as a vessel to explain it. I don't know anything about this game series. I know a little bit about Smash. I played through Brawl or whatever. But um, I'm just saying that I think that I think that this is an aspect of the quote unquote censorship that should be understood. Okay. Um, let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me talk for a second, please, because I it. play the fuck out of Smash. Okay. Okay. Shulk in the game is in nothing but his underwear. Sephiroth is shirtless. Yeah. Okay. There are literally sexy versions of both of them. Second, okay. Let me point this out. I agree with what Brad just said. AC, whatever you guys call him. I never know anymore. But I will put Hashtag this. Doxed. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, first and first, first come for everything, right? The thing is, is that to me, this is their adaptation of this character into their game. It's not censorship. That's just the way I well, look so, at it. Uh, kind of, kind of, like you could argue they're, that they're making sort of a version like... of this character from for their game. Okay, this is not this game, her coming in there in a bikini and all of a sudden they're putting a, a tube top on her. No, yeah, this is and, their and version of the character, clear, so it's this, not censorship in my mind. It's just well, this, this comment being addressed by Ram11, Bayonetta is M-rated. I don't see them releasing Bayonetta 3 as an E-game. Um, so I'm I'm not using this properly, I guess. Um, I'm trying to use it as a, as a con conceptual jumping-off point, not a literal one. Yeah, um, I understand what you're saying. I'm just I'm just making a clear point that needs to be made. Yeah, yeah, no, C I agree. Censorship, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I think that this is an aspect of the censorship that uh that this is going to have consequences down the road is what you're saying I'll you yeah know. well it's 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 an unintended consequence and what it actually is is not it's not censorship so much as it is again it's the concept of things going mainstream and, uh, I mean, and, then naked and so is kirby and yet we can't have my show <laughs> well I lowest mean. lowest common denominator in the uh you know uh That's the property big. due to it going mainstream is what yeah. what I'm getting at. It's just it's just like what happened to Dragon Ball. I mean, it used to be good, yeah. and now we have Super, and it's watchable at best. I'm anyway. sorry, B blue blooper Saiyan's not doing a lot for me. <laughs> no, I I, don't, I have not been a fan either. Uh, continuing though, um, canceled Nintendo 64 game Dinosaur Planet sees light of day. Uh, is that yeah, Fox? so Fox How? McCloud. Apparently, Forest of Illusion bought uh, a disc that had the game on it, and they're working on a way for you to be able to download and play it because uh, it's currently not – like the build of the game <clears throat> is not actually play. playable, but they're working on hacking it into a playable version. So that's a thing if you're interested. Who gave Fox McCloud likes? <laughs> 
Silent Hill director uh, Keiichiro Toyama discusses new horror games. So I'm not really going to read this. I just thought it was interesting what he talked about in terms Silent, of what he considers horror. The discussion Silent Hill, does he talk very loud? <laughs> well, the concept he talks about, he says uh, he thinks of, of horror. What did he say? He thinks of horrors. He thinks of horror as uh, the view I have of horror is everyday life being shaken. Rather than showing scary things, it should question our position, make us challenge the fact that we're living peacefully. I like bringing this type of thoughts into my concepts. I feel I feel um, like this is these are all shots from his affidavit. <laughs> you know, one trait of my games is the setting. What city or village do we evolve in? Uh, so that definitely applied to Silent Hill. I thought that was just interesting. I'm realizing how poor of a job I did curating articles today. <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice, which is fucking great. I have an entire water. container of cough drops if you need one. Yeah, just mail them over. We'll see it in a couple days. <laughs> we'll see it in about a month. So Christopher Barker says... <clears throat> Sorry. Dragon Ball Super is a definite pooper. GT had some effort. So that was my opinion as well until I went back and watched GT and uh, it did not live up to the memories, uh, the rose colored glasses. Uh, it is quite terrible. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm not going to lie. The, like the first, I think it's 20 episodes of GT is a literal, like, what am I watching? Like I, yeah. I just finished Dragon Ball Z and this is what I get. Right. But the thing, the thing is, I mean, don't take me wrong. When you see base form Goku freaking fighting Cell and Frieza and they can't do a thing about it, you have some serious questions. The thing is, though, is once you hit the the, the baby arc, his mm -hmm. name is Baby, like the show yeah. actually picks up and has some context and texture to it. But up until that point, yeah. I'm not going to lie, but it's still better than fucking Super. No, I, I thought that too until I sat down and rewatched it. And I, I had told myself for years, oh, yeah, it just – you just got to get through the shitty arcs and it gets better at like su super Android 17 or something. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it actually does not get better. <laughs> um, it is, <laughs> it is pretty freaking bad the whole time. It I gets, mean, don't get me wrong. It, it gets least... slightly better. It, it doesn't even touch garlic junior saga in Z though. That's how bad it is. <laughs> the thing, the thing is that at least Dragon Ball GT had it in it to like go, I think it was 60 episodes. I might be wrong on that number. I know it was uh, 64. 64? Okay. <laughs> um, but then fucking Dragon Ball Super takes like the first 30 goddamn episodes to redo, not to even redo both movies. movies. Yeah. So you so, know the difference between loving a series and money grip grabbing. I hope I highlighted. Oh God, please tell me I did. Sorry, yeah, me, I didn't want these it. both in here. Okay. Holy crap. I don't even remember. Okay, Capcom Arcade Stadium removes Street Fighter 2's Rising Sun. Why would you take the sun out of... Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay, so I think these are backwards. I think I'm supposed to do this one first, but I kind of don't even want to read it. Um, so in the old version, it would alternate colors after you won or whatever. Uh -huh. And in the new version, cringe... I can play this game and I never have noticed. Double, triple, epic cringe. Um, you could just put like a regular sun kind of thing. Right, which is what they did for the Street Fighter 4. You could have put the whatever. baby from Teletubbies up there. I mean, So I, I'll read this though because uh, <laughs> I thought it was interesting. Uh, so yet another re-release of Street Fighter 2 has made its way into onto consoles. And with it, an instance of censorship as the rising sun present in E Honda's stage, I'm sorry, E Honda, E Honda's stage was removed, likely done to preemptively squelch any potential whining from those that find the flag offensive. The title in question, Capcom Arcade sta Stadium, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Wait, wait, wait. Someone found a rising sun in the land of the rising sun offensive. <gasps> yes, because they associate it with uh, Imperial oh, Japan. So the Hong Kong flag has also undergone various changes in different versions of the game. Here it is in Capcom Arcade Stadium. That was, quote unquote, Hong Kong, right? Which is not part of mainland not China. Hong either. Kong. Then it has its own uh, flag here, and then this weird other British colony flag. 
Um, <sighs> back in 2019, E Honda was added to Street Fighter 4 along with a modern version of his stage, which had the staple sun but not the extending rays. It is suspected that the rising sun was removed due to the seething hatred had for the symbol by those residing in China and Korea, as certain individuals from those communist countries despise it <laughs> for, mul for multiple reasons, multitude of reasons. Okay, so they said something here. They said, here we go. I thought, I thought this is interesting. Particularly in China and Korea, vocal groups associate the symbol with the Imperial Japanese Army and World War II era occupation. The issue is a complex one for many reasons, not the least of which is that although the rising sun flag was flown by the Imperial Japanese military, the symbol was neither created for nor exclusively used by the armed forces. And so it doesn't have a necessarily, militar necessarily militaristic or imperial feel to most Japanese citizens. I have to imagine that the... Um, confederate flag in the u.s is probably similar uh to that I mean, but i don't know i don't i don't really care about that issue yeah. i'm just saying that the swastika i can't, I can't understand <laughs> well, I can people who take offense to like that is that are literally from history you when someone takes it too far i understand and then being an asshole but at the same time i'm like you can't really get upset about that don't take me wrong you you go back and you watch any movie that has hitler in it don't take me wrong. I'm not going to take the swastika out of the fucking movie just because if I just because the person sitting next to me is a Jew, it, it this has nothing to do with that. Oh, you know, I, I'm too tired yeah, to even you can't, you can't rehash this conversation. But yeah, it's just it's absurd. So real quick, <clears throat> Christopher Barker says the Dragon Ball's turning on Goku and friends after being abused is genius in concept, not bad. But could have been better. Yeah, no, I think I there's agree. a lot of winning ideas in Dragon Ball. Uh, I GT. love that idea. Just the execution of it was done so poorly that it just completely failed. If and they it needed, followed they characters that, that, to, they, that it shouldn't have. They needed to skip straight <clears throat> to the Shadow Dragon arcs where it should have started. Uh, the Rising Sun is imperialist now and racist. Uh, Super Saiyan 4 is better than Super Saiyan God. Absolutely agree which I find retarded. Hey, there's a level beyond God. I'm like, get out of here with that bullshit. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> All right. So, um, continuing. Seven Seas addresses Mushoku Tensei Classroom of the Elite light novel localization changes. Uh-oh. All right. So, oh, I would like to read I, this. I've seen this um, but, Reese, can you do the... Uh, can you do the release news real quick so that I can go and grab uh, more so, man, drinks? I literally buy you a, I literally buy you a Starbucks. Oh. Uh, um, I guess. Because we're in release news. If you want to do the right stuff, things right yeah, now, yeah, yeah. i back to this. FTN, uh, you want to go through those uh, two links you sent me? Do I want to go through them? I, I'm literally going to be no, no, like no, the, the two 13 that you, seconds if you guys... I just need you to two stop. You sent, Talk amongst yourselves. That's all okay, I Okay, we will. Thank you. FD, no, the two, nice that, you the two that you sent... The two that you sent. Include them, yes. Left. Do you want to talk about those right now? Eight. Uh, yeah, sure. We can do it before the right stuff. Six. If you just want to stall for like a half a minute, that's okay, all you go, really have go, to do. Go, just go give me a sec. Go get your shit. <laughs> the two, do it. The two, the two. Okay, let me go see. through them. Says uh, Random Eleven, which, through. by the way, earlier he said he's part of the. Was it the No Caps? Uh, uh, not club. I'm trying. To, yeah, uh, lowercase gang. That's what he said. Oh yeah, lowercase. Oh, okay. Here oh, we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What the hell is this? From? As it says, it's Dragon Ball Z Kai, the complete collection. Which is something that I might actually consider getting. Not this one, but that is um, way too fucking expensive. Yeah, a it's too expensive, and b it's DVD. So two <laughs> reasons not to buy it. What the hell? And a third to, is that it's Kai. It's like yeah, it's also Australian, so you gotta have region free player. No, well, player. that's Why not. The hell would you that's pay not problem for me for fucking. Yeah. A series that you could literally get on DVD for less than half of that. For around half of that, anyway. Video commentary. Well, let's see. There's the oh, four Australia. collections, okay. and then you have to buy 
the, the Boo final, Saga. Yeah, the, the final. So it honestly might be, like, relatively evenly costed, but, like, you know, it's Kai. I don't really care. Wait a minute. I, I honestly... I have... It's just a stretch goal, if you want. To what describe. do you mean you have to buy the Boo Saga? It's showing Cell and Majin Boo. No, not for this. I'm talking about in North America, if you were to buy the equivalent. Uh-huh. Yeah. You have let's, to get like... Let's find out. That's two forty nine ninety nine. Let's find out. Which is Australian dollars, which is essentially Canadian dollars. <laughs> which means that it's actually slightly less. Than it's actually dollars. like uh, seven cents to buy. It, All right. Not so the, the Kai sets. So yes. Now seven. remember, each each of the collections was split into two 12 episode things at one point. Yep. So, yep. I'm yeah. doing, but I'm, I'm doing what's available right now. Perfect. To uh, I know final like chapters eight part sets, one. Did really they make a complete them. collection for the final chapters, final or is it chapter? still the no. three parts? Just the three parts. Which and I got there's... for like $14. All right, so we got seven. You want any guesses at the final cut? The final cut is $251. Oh, wow. That's... But if you have got anime, it's going to be a little bit cheaper. <laughs> However, the conversion on Australian dollars is essentially Canadian dollars, which is like way cheaper than US dollars. So it's, like uh, it's probably cheaper than. That'd be like two hundred. But that's the bucks. but that's DVD. This was the Blu-rays. Yeah, that's that I mean, is true. Correct. That is that's fucking DVDs. It's good to compare. It's still a remarkably like even. Uh, I don't know. It's more even than I expected. What I can't understand is this. I'm, I'm the fucking orange brick set was released for like $200 and it had everything in it. This is less... Is This is right at half the episodes. You could buy the... It, it's not even the orange brick. You can buy the 16 by 9 Blu-ray complete collection for less than this. It's gone on sale so many times. Hmm. Yeah, Alright, just... you want to do the other one real quick? Yep. Alright. Do it, uh, Hold on, I got to Come on, you... this one? Yes, this now, for the record, this isn't news. It's just uh, I discovered this um, just I don't know, just now, pretty much. Charlotte's Web. I mean, there's a Web. complete uh, complete box set for Charlotte being released in uh, the UK, and it's got an art box, which is nice. And um, April 2021. So Why does the UK get better prices than we do. <laughs> I, I think I uh, told you this before, but. Uh, Japan Japan has region A for their Blu-ray region, and same mm -hmm. with North America. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. UK and Australia is region B, mm -hmm. and when Aniplex releases their overpriced sets, they uh, keep it overpriced because uh, they don't want that. Japan people to buy sets from North America for a cheaper price. They want them to incentivize to stay in their own ecosystem. Yeah. But when it comes to the UK, because it's a different region, uh, they technically can't just import it from the UK and play it on their player. So that's probably why it's uh, easier for them to uh, get away with these lower prices. The but anyway, so the significance of this is that um, before, like, I don't know, it was kind of iffy with their releases. It seemed like part two was the only thing you could get for a while. And in Australia, they literally, you can't find part one anywhere. I, I don't even know if they made it, but you can get part two. <laughs> um, the, Australia is also releasing a complete collection, but this one's cooler because it has an art box. But um, the other um, thing is that, like, me and Danny were talking about the one time. And uh, it's like, why do they only have part two? So I'm, I'm more or less just putting this out there for Danny if he's listening. It's like, Charlotte complete box set. So now we've got an answer to it. And also, you know, if you scroll down, you'll notice something beautiful. Brad will notice it. If you scroll down. I gotta get back to the other page. Here we go. Take a look at the... Wait, where the hell is it? No, no, go up. It's like one of the subheadings. Scroll up. On well, down on the mouse. On the discs, on the extra packaging, product details. Oh, wait, go up, go up. It's the extras. Oh. This one? Extra tuz. 
on disk X retas. Oh, oh, I didn't have it clicked. Okay, I did have it clicked. What the fuck? Yeah. Click, click. On disk X X X retas. X X retas. Yes. Oh, uh, X retas. You're pointing out they're spelled wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On I'm, just, I'm, I'm just. It's beautiful. Um, like but that. but yeah, I just thought I'd point that out. Okay. For, so, for someone who's bought enough of Anaplex to want to puke. Also, oh. there's a race down there. Literary CD Steelbook. <laughs> yeah, for that <laughs> thing that we love. Uh, wow. Myself and Greenline. And a complete, hey, a complete collection for her. Erased for forty-two dollars. That's oh half the God. price of one of the Anaplex sets. How much is that? Uh, I I can't read it. How much is that Vile Evergarden? Forty-eight. Uh, Forty-eight ninety-nine. Oh, oh. Uh, that's <laughs> pounds, not dollars. Oh, 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 so that's actually like double that. Mm, okay. Not for U.S. dollars. It's more. It's closer to double Canadian dollars. It's more like one point five right. times U.S. dollars. Okay. But yeah. So Dan, you're okay, back. Never mind. Um, go I've seen you. this. You can continue so, to review. Hey, Danny. Yeah. I, Danny. Yep. I. Uh, yeah, 1.4. When we um, decided to do the show early, I uh, kind of forgot about the fact that I didn't eat dinner. So I'm uh, attempting to refuel. I also got some alcohol. <laughs> that sometimes helps <laughs> an empty stomach. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? The, the thing is, why don't have you ever tried the – have you ever tried those – God, my brain forgets them, but I have a. I bought a polio. Yeah. Polio. Have you ever tried polio? Calorie <laughs> um, mates from Japan. Hmm. Yeah. I love. I them. ate those when I uh, when I was working peak at the warehouse. Mm -hmm. That was my breakfast every day. Um, I like. I I gotta try the cheese ones. The chocolate ones are good if you heat them up. So if anyone's the chocolate ones are the only ones that are worth tasting, I think. If if anyone I haven't had the cheese ones though. If anyone other me seen Gleepnir, they they have this cow they have this snack throughout the show. She's right. If it's the chocolate ones, the chocolate ones are the best heated up because it tastes just like a brownie, like a really crispy brownie. Oh, anyway, uh, sorry. Sorry, that's kind of a good food in my stomach. I love how I love how we're <laughs> having Brad Samar Cam with him eating and trying to put down some <laughs> alcohol. I, I had a statement earlier that I was going to say about that other thing, but fuck that. This is more interesting. <laughs> Dude, why don't you just do this? Why don't you just have a stream for about 45 minutes of you eating? Yeah. I'm watching. Now, just, just, just now for the feature stream. Comments. We've got another tag for our Pornhub uh, uh, when we finally start streaming the podcast on Pornhub. Hmm. Feeder. Yeah. Okay. It amazes uh, me how many actually. Sorry, these are some of the worst. On Pornhub. Oh really? Yeah, I, I heard. One? I heard this through the grapevine from a friend of mine. There, he's like, he's like, yeah, a lot of the people I'm following, they like, they put shit on YouTube on a from YouTube onto Pornhub, and but when the purge happened, from what I understand, I haven't fact checked this because I, I didn't follow anyone on Pornhub. The thing was, was he? He's like, like all of it disappeared because they were verified users. He's like, I don't know. He's like, I don't understand how all this got attacked by the shit they were quote unquote trying to protect. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite thing is when a person Pokemon. goes from, <laughs> when a person goes to the process of getting verified and then the platform just decides they don't like him, so they're like, you're not verified anymore. Okay. <clears throat> oh man. Who knew all it took was a sip of Oh god, is that really a smear off ice? <laughs> to get your voice back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Seven Seas addresses Mushoku Tensei. Classroom of the Elite light novel localization changes. Classroom of the Elite? Oh, this is an old show. I've already seen this. Light I novel. like that. Say what? Light what? novels. So I liked it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, so they're releasing it. They're releasing it with the title Mushoku Tensei. Jobless reincarnation is like the subheading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the lowercase r, oh god! <laughs> 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 oh, I want to address real quick the uh, random one says dead air. 
The two. The two. Do it. The two. Go through them. I'm all Cavs game now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was he referring to? Oh, um, that was the, uh, two, the articles. two articles. The, the oh, two okay. links that that um, Reese yeah, asked me if you. Okay, dude, dude, we just we just made him convert to my game. <laughs> so Seven Seas Entertainment. Keeps by the way, on that back screen. Real quick, we got like two articles about this. Real quick, but. I want to acknowledge the fact that we need a devoted section on the podcast now for fucking seven C's licenses. Cause they're just going too crazy lately. But uh, anyway, so seven C's entertainment confirmed with anime news network that it will release a new version of classroom of the elite volume seven light novel. And that it is reevaluating its editorial choices on Mushoku Tensei jobless reincarnation after complaints surfaced around omitted or rewritten text in the English releases. Hmm. Okay, could, to, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In between the clicking, me moving, and something, I misunderstood that. Could you clarify that texture for people who aren't like watching this lot, watching it straight on the screen? The context. Um, so they're going to be reissuing a new version of Classroom of the Elite because they feel like they may have changed too much in their editorializing of the localization or whatever. So according to text comparisons posted on Reddit, the Seven C's release of Classroom of the Elite Volume 7 omitted entire paragraphs of descriptive prose and dialogue from the original Japanese novel, which I will show you shortly. <laughs> Readers complained that the changes made it harder to understand what was happening in the story. Seven C's will reissue the volume in both print and digital form. Oh, that great expense to send everybody an email. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're doing the print version. Hey, that, I'll give them that. Good on you, Seven Seas. Uh, get on. Good on you for for unless the opposite of going woke. <laughs> unless well, they're changing like they it in a way uh, where they add the woke stuff, where it's like a uh, person <laughs> of color uh, or whatever it is. Yeah, maybe it sounds oh, to me like they so went good. woke. They got Good backlash. In our my person of color friend. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I mean, it um, doesn't matter. Yeah, well, Justin Savakis was saying that he, 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 he said something to the effect of, uh, I find it amusing how Seven Seas keeps licensing, like, really ballsy, fringe, potentially even far right type uh, entertainment. And then they get the slightest, like, pushback, and they kind of just fold, right? <laughs> like, he, he says something to that effect, anyway. So, anyway, um, similar cases of omissions were also noted for the, first two, for the first two volumes of Mushoku Tensei. Several controversial changes also involved a rewritten characterization. In Chapter 3 of Volume 2, a scene which depicted the protagonist, Rudius, groping and attempting to pull off the panties of a sleeping girl, was replaced with him trying to pull her shirt over her stomach to prevent her from catching a cold. That's I'm sorry, but did they change the art? Like, it's a light This is novel. a light novel, not the manga. Oh, oh. The uh, class, OCA podcast class, uh, has gotten an F for... Uh, Attention to detail, this podcast. <laughs> I, I get an A, though. I get an A, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes uh, Reese gets an A. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's an easy mistake to make when translating because, you know, I can't even. All right, anyway, the scene in its original form was depicted in episode six of the television anime adaptation, which is probably what tipped everybody off, right? <laughs> Another notable change from, from Volume 1 involved removing references to rape. When Lilia described her past sexual history with Paul to Rudius in Chapter 9, he mentally referred to Paul's actions as rape and adultery. This was changed in English to cheater and womanizer. In another section <laughs> earlier in the same chapter, Lilia recalls an incident where Paul snuck into her bedroom at night for sex, describing the initial act as forced. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought I read this. I read this differently in my head. You, you said, "I can't believe they thought a wholesale scene rewrite wouldn't get caught." LOL. I read that as, "I can't believe they thought this wholesome scene 
<laughs> had to be rewritten. <laughs> Correct either way. Yeah. <laughs> AC is giving up uh, on be- giving up being an anime podcast and will now be muck mukbang podcast called Open Cooking Podcast. Um Open Cooking Academy. There you go. <laughs> um I'm trying very hard not to make references to other things. Reese is a teacher <laughs> simp. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Well, what, hold what on. Allow our band on Twitch. Private sessions, AC. Uh, yes, I I do tutor my patrons. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, another another normal change. Uh, do we uh, do that? Uh, Paul snuck into her bedroom at night for sex, describing the initial act as forced. The reference to force was removed in the English version. ANN has personally confirmed the changes highlighted regarding Mushoku Tensei Volumes 1 and 2. So this is the full statement from uh, Seven Seas where they said, The localization process, especially with novels, involves multiple stages of editing after we receive the raw translation. The process of creating smooth and readable English language prose often involves condensing or rearranging text. So line by line translation comparisons are not always one to one. Stalling for a second. Okay, cool. Uh, um, Seven C's goal is to provide accurate translations that reflect the author's intent. Yet the same, yet at the same time, we pride ourselves on providing polished English versions that are commercially viable and enjoyable to read. Our accomplished editors, many of whom are critically acclaimed writers as well as die-hard manga and light novel fans, yeah, uh, you know, you know the type, <laughs> the type that thinks Chun Li's in Mortal Kombat, exactly. <laughs> um, are tasked with carefully threading the needle and balancing word-for-word -word accuracy with fluidity. In most cases, we are quite pleased with the results and are, con and are confident that our translations stack up with our competitors' translations and other professional prose novels in English. That said, the localization process is always a judgment call. In the case of Classroom of the Elite Volume 7, fans rightly drew our attention to a heavy-handed editorial approach in certain portions of the text. We appreciate this criticism and have taken it to heart. As a result, we have now re-edited the book and will release a new version shortly, both digital and print, that strikes a more carefully considered balance. As for Mushoku Tensei, we are currently reevaluating our editorial choices and will be making necessary adjustments on some volumes soon. That's what I wanted to ask earlier. What were they? What are they trying to say is wrong with Mushoku Tensei? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the Sankaku Complex article in a second, <laughs> and I will read to you the uh, the changes Wait. that were made. Oh, I thought you already read the changes. Was that for class? No, or no. The there's there's going to be an actual line by line uh, comparison in a second. So you'll see exactly what got omitted, okay? Anyway, we thank fans uh, for their invaluable feedback. Localization is not a science. It is an art form. We will continue to refine our in-house editorial standards to ensure that our localizations remain faithful yet artful. Seven Seas Entertainment licensed. You know what? I don't think I need to read this. This is just telling us. Oh, here's an update, though. Um, you know, I'm not going to read these. I'm not going to read these because they're in here. Uh, so for the uh, Sankaku Complex one, they said, let's make sure I didn't skip it. Oh, 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 oh. Actually, maybe they aren't in here. Okay, I'll read them real quick. God damn. Okay, um, so here's the update. Um, the translator, Alyssa Orton Nioka, stated on Twitter that she was not made aware of the translation changes beforehand, saying, quote, for what it's worth, I was completely blindsided by the changes to the MT uh, Mushoku Tensei uh, light, light novel. novel. I knew about Volume 2's issue and was under the impression it was a layout issue, not an editorial change. It seems that was not the case. Please understand, those were editorial choices, and I was not included in that process. Hey, don't shoot uh -huh. the messenger or, or <laughs> the translator. Uh, I didn't learn about these changes until all of you did. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You're taking a page out of Barack Obama's book here. No, I, actually, I legitimately think that the translators here are not to blame. Uh, but 
any chance the dog Obama I'm going to take. Uh, many translators turn in their scripts and don't see the final product until it's finished. Uh, I, I say that, and then I realize that I have once again, in Black History Month, no less. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> heard this podcast. If it wasn't already clear enough, uh, my policy on translation is to translate faithfully regardless of whether I agree with the content itself. I think it should be for the readers to decide how they feel about it. Fellow translator on the series, Paul Cuneo, Cuneo, tweeted, For what it's worth, I view it as my job as a translator to convey the author's intent as best I can, warts and all. But as freelancers and one person in a multi-step process, we don't we often don't have that much control over the end result. I do feel editing should be a two-way process with translators looped in to help keep the connection to the original text slash intent as solid as possible. I'll try to advocate for process changes with my clients toward that goal. Okay, anyway, all right, let's keep going. I want you to know what they actually said. All right. Whoa, 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 so breaking here... news. Breaking news. <laughs> uh, apparently, Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Ultimate Edition from the UK, I think they pushed it back so that it's going to have the correct discs when you buy it. So my solution oh. to my problem is buy the UK Wait. and don't even think about the US. All right, okay. continue. All right. So these are the Classroom of the Elite um, changes. Lance, you there? Yeah, I'm still there, bud. All right. Uh, bl blab the impaler. <laughs> um, <laughs> official translation. This is So this is what the official translation says. I was freezing. Icy water dripped from my hair. They dumped water over me four times now. My uniform was soaked right through. Even my underwear was wet. But my chilled body didn't scare me. It was the ice in my heart that did. Come on. That is enough. Karuizawa... That, sorry, come on. That is enough, Goriza. Why is there no space after these periods? Make things easier on yourself. Now, here's the fan translation. It chilled me down to my core. By the way, the bold stuff here is what they took out. Just, just saying, okay? Oh, okay, quite um, a bit. It chilled me down to my core. The chill of the water dripping from my hair. They've dumped water on me four times now. Not only my uniform, but even my underwear are soaking wet now. But it's not the fact that my body's trembling from the cold that terrifies me. It's the cold that grips my heart. A darkness deep and dark enough to make you resent the world reared its head. Why am I being bullied? Those feelings gradually changed. Why am I even alive? What did I do wrong? I began to blame myself. My heart that's frozen over started eating away at my body. The scars that run deep began to ache again. Hey, Save yourself already, Karu Izawa. There's no need to suffer any more of this. Anyway, you can see how, how much longer the fan translation of those bits were. The translation? It was, it was more interesting, to say the least. You know, I don't know. I think that... Uh, there, so, I'll, I'll say this. I, I think that the official translation, to play devil's advocate here, I think that condensing all that down to to bring the main point closer to the comparison point has its perks, right? So for instance, saying my chilled body didn't scare me. It was the ice in my heart that did. I feel like that is a much more concise way of saying what they said, right? But I do feel that losing this line, although it is very poorly translated here in the fan translation, why am I being bullied? It's, I would I would have written it this way. Um, my thoughts changed. Uh, first, I was wondering why I was bullied, but then I moved to why am I even alive? What did I do wrong? You know, I, I would have phrased it something like that. Like you would you would get the mental journey from the torture of whatever's going on in this scene uh, that you you could string it together a little bit better than the fan translator did. Um, but I do see the the value in just c cutting all that shit out and getting it straight to this point but it feels a little too try hard at that point you know what it, i mean it, it, what it feels what it feels like to me is it's like it's forcing like the lines there help build the picture by the words that you're given but by translating it to the ice in my heart does it leads a question as to what is that referencing sure so it, it brought no, it i agree from a, it went from an implication to literally giving you the context and i approve yeah yeah context. yeah so but it, i also it, it, i would love with the with with the Ice in my heart to later be referenced because you'd have the context. But if this well, they was do, a they do, they say, uh, 
they say in this version, my heart that's frozen over started eating away at my body, uh, which I think that that particular line is more impactful when it's written the way that they did in the official translation. Mm -hmm. But um, I do think that, uh, like, I can see why people are pissed that you're taking out all this internal monologuing and whatnot, you know, the scars that run deep begin to ache again, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I can I can see it. I, I, I do think that they could have translated it a little differently. Like you could have what if you wanted both the best of both worlds, what I would have done is I would have taken all this stuff and put it before the line about my chilled body. Right. Mm -hmm. So you could get the best of both worlds by just saying, you know, why am I being bullied? Why am I even alive? What did I do wrong? Why are we here just to suffer every night? I can feel my leg. <laughs> I mean, I can feel my third. I mean, what? That's a uh, phantom pain. Right. Yeah. All right. So then there's more here. The official translation said, they made me lick their shoes. They even made me pick garbage off the ground and eat it. I remembered. After a while, I learned to accept whatever happened. To accept reality. Accept that Ryuin was bullying me again. Accept that it was going to start all over. That the girls who were now kind to me, who were my friends, would change. The only thing my old school ever did for me was tell me about this school. Here's the fan translation. Again, the, the bold text is the stuff that was changed or removed. There were times when they'd make me pick up garbage off the ground and uh, no, no, pick up garbage on the ground with my mouth and eat it. That's very different from... Uh, <laughs> yeah, no shit. At times, I was made to lick shoes. I endured humiliation after humiliation. Yes, that's right. I ended up recalling it. At a time like this, the last measure humans take in self-defense is to accept it all. After the reality that I am being bullied by Ryu, and, and it's, it's, damn it, damn it, FDM. <laughs> Sorry, I'll come back to that. <laughs> um <laughs> If I do that, it'll be easier. Uh, I wonder if I'm going back to those days. I know that if it that if that happens, my heart surely won't be able to take it. The ones who were kind to me, the ones who befriended me, they'd end up changing. I won't be able to endure those cruel days again. The only thing the school that abandoned me did for me was inform me about this school. Um, so, sorry, I just, I had a flash of envisioning a fucking phantom pain solid snake enduring the, the torture. <laughs> oh, this hurts so bad. And then it made me think of the, uh, the scene from, uh, from Metal Gear Solid 5. What's her name? Quiet? Is that her name? I think yes. so, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, the, where yeah, she, yeah, exactly she does, like, much. the dance in the rain, because it's all about the, the the water scene, but, like, where they where they swap out the model with Ocelot. <laughs> oh, my God, I have not been in my life. <laughs> yeah. All right, so... Quiet, he says on all more here. Um, So here's the official translation. X set you up and let Manabe bully you so he could record it to use against her. You weren't saved. You were trapped. Pretty stupid, huh? Hold on, my AirPod just died. Uh, by the way, I'm thinking about getting new AirPods. There goes it. Oh, uh, I could put. <laughs> I have an there idea. Why don't you like places. not get Apple branded because it's not, like not infinite good. dollars? Oh, they um, they're pretty cheap now. They sell them at Costco. Anyway, for how much? Yeah, how much? Like ninety nine dollars compared to that is not cheap. <laughs> You, dude, why don't you why don't you you know like get a fucking poor quality pair of studio fucking por uh, portable headphones? You'll spend about as much, and you have better quality. Um, maybe. Um, see, I mean, the thing about here. the thing about the AirPods is that I go to Costco and they're there. The thing about what you suggested is the research that needs to happen. <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> Pretty stupid, huh? I'd been tricked. Look around. Is X here right now? Is X saving you? X going to give it to you. Uh, it's reasonable to assume that X cut all ties with you when his identity was about to be exposed. No, that wasn't. That couldn't be. So here's the fan translation. X deliberately set you up for bully. Set, sorry. X deliberately set up your bullying to acquire evidence of that. Don't you think that's just inhuman? So X is um, Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Sorry. X is A for Pretty Little Wire? <laughs> no, I don't want to believe that. 
But what he's saying, it's something so simple. So Kiyotaka showing up there and saving me wasn't a coincidence? You weren't rescued. You were ensnared. How stupid. Don't you think? I was deceived? Look around you. Look around you. Is X here right now? Are they saving you right now? Kiyotaka has been deceiving me from the start? It's safe to assume that they cut their ties with you when their own identity was about to be exposed. No, that can't be. That just can't be. So if they're cutting this much out, it almost seems like they're like, well, the original book translation would have been 280 pages, but we cut it down to 230 to save money on costs. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it just it's it's not a n none of it is helping them in any manner. It's just making people <laughs> pissed when it gets translated. Hey, uh, Random Eleven, I know you probably already left by now, but I would like to acknowledge that I have been uh, right. doing a real bang up job getting timestamps on the previous podcasts. Uh, so I, I'm working on it so that people who leave you can uh, have an easier time getting through the monstrosities we put together. Also, Lance, are you watching the old podcast from the beginning? Yes. If you happen to uh, take note of any timestamps, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> uh, I know that. I, yeah, like the way I kind of see it is that the bare minimum for a timestamp podcast, uh, from from my feeling of getting it done, is to just have like, um, okay, well, opening discussions. Um, here's when we did pickups, uh, streaming news, blah blah, blah that kind of stuff. You know, um, something kind of like uh, like how the doc this? is set up. Okay, so okay, so I get what you're kind of like what I got there right now. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, pretty much exactly like that. <laughs> huh. That's the bare minimum. Like, you know, if there's any other thing that we can I, I love add how more. I didn't have time to see it, but all right. Um, well. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Reese, Reese right. can forward it to me later. Well, apparently, apparently Reese is, is doing it for this podcast right now. He's going to steal that extra point from me. <laughs> um, he wants Senpai to notice. I'm just doing the bare minimum of effort right here. But I appreciate the bare minimum. So, ba so base. Okay, I, you know what? Continue. I, I know what you want, though. I, okay. I so, all right. Here's the last one. Official translation. I, I see. That's enough for you. And there's absolutely no way X would just stroll up here alone, said Ibuki. Then allow me to explain, Ibuki. I said, turning my gaze on her. The island exam. You were instructed to take pictures of the leader's key card, but your digital camera got damaged somehow. Am I wrong? Jeez, they must have cut out a fuck ton of this. Um, so here's the fan translation. Uh, I see. But you're quite something if you're going to play dumb. Enough is enough, Ryuan. There's no way X would just boldly march up to us alone. Ibuki counseled Ryuan. Good grief. Now this is a problem. Ibuki and, Ishika I Ibuki and Ishizaki apparently don't believe your X. Ryuan, str Ryuan shrugged his shoulders and ex exacerbatedly... Exasperatedly, not exasperatedly, or whatever I said. Not masturbatedly. And ex <laughs> exasperatedly looked over at Ibuki and Ishizaki. You said you won't do anything. You said you won't do anything, didn't you, Ayano Koji? But I need to ascertain whether this is the truth or not. To do that, I have no choice but to make all this common knowledge. You're fine with that? He said that and looked over. He he said that and looked me over with a smile. I've already admitted it from the start, but if you if you still won't believe me, then allow me to disclose some more uh, some more information, Ibuki. I spoke to Ibuki, who just won't who just wouldn't stop doubting me. During the island exam, you were instructed to film the leader's key card with your digital camera, but for some reason, at the critical moment, your digital camera malfunctioned and you were left unable to use it. Am I wrong? Jeez. I'll tell you one thing. From just these excerpts, I don't want to read any more of this. <laughs> I wouldn't torture yourself because you're just beating you're just beating a dead horse either way. Yeah, it sounds awful. Uh, not not an edifying uh, experience. So uh, there you go. I don't know really how to wrap up this point other than to say that's a thing. Yeah, um, it happened. So there you go. Sorry if that was a huge waste of time. Uh, Seven Seas licenses daily report about my witch senpai manga. So here are the, here are the licenses. Witch <laughs> senpai. Senpai. Seven Seas licenses a life turned upside down autobiography manga. Witch senpai? As, you mean this one or that one or that one? Over there? It's just the same one about the um, the lesbian. Right my, my, my weird it does kind of look like it does kind of look like that art style, doesn't it? My lesbian. Uh, 
experience with romance or whatever it's called. Uh, my, lo my lesbian experience with loneliness. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait a minute. What are y'all talking about? There's another manga with a similar art style that's called My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness. Yeah. Opening up Google. Because I've never heard of this before. You know why you've never heard of it? Because I can't show the cover on the podcast. <laughs> so we've avoided talking about it. <laughs> Seven Seas licenses Call to Adventure and Dungeon Dive Manga. Dungeon Dice Monsters. Dungeon Dice Manga, sorry. Seven Seas licenses Time Stop Hero, Level 1 Demon Lord, and One Room Hero Manga. Uh, I'm guessing that's the Time Stop Hero. Wow, that is some unappealing artwork. <laughs> what are you, Sakura and Naruto mixed into one body? <laughs> hmm. That's what the fuck? Who? I just looked at this. I... On a what? Inch what the hell is happening? Let's see. This is like almost the Kira Toriyama art, guy from but Pokemon. not. <laughs> it looks like it looks like a really uh, boisterous Hiro Mashima art. It's Gainax. What Look the at hell that. is that? Is that supposed to be like a dragon? <laughs> oh my gosh, he has Saiyan boots. And see, have like three yeah, that's what I said. It's almost the Kira Toriyama. It's a Kira Toriyama uh, ish uh, proportions and stuff, but in Gainax pose. All right, yeah, Seven Seas yeah. licenses Headhunter, Headhunted to Another World, from Salary Man to Heavenly King. <laughs> hey, uh, Dan, <laughs> you here? I'm here. Does that look like Ryan to you? No, not the, at all. The anime girl or the dude? It <laughs> looks like what he thinks. I haven't he seen Ryan like. in a few years. It might. <laughs> that's probably an unfair question to ask me. Yeah, well, I haven't seen him in a. Few years, I think. I think that's what he thinks he looks like. Damn, if he's got knockers like that, I'm interested. <laughs> that's probably what he thinks his wife looks like too. <laughs> oh shit! Well, I would hope somebody thinks their wife looks like that. Yeah. Well, let's not go there. Seventies <laughs> new adult manga asks: Does a hot elf live next door to you? That's no. what I think. I'm the answer is no. <laughs> Unfortunately. Seven Seas license is mature rated. Do you like big girls? <laughs> define big. <laughs> yeah, please. Both define that last the word. Well, let's look at the size relation to his head. I, I like so, how I, mean, I, I read that, the description. That, that's okay. What's the name of the What's the name of the girl from uh, Resident Evil Village again? Uh, nine no. foot tall girl. Oh, who cares? Uh, read the you read make, the you lot, <laughs> where you were up, where you move your, move your cursor to the second to last line. For and read for, no 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 right where you're at. For, start from first. First, he has to figure out which girl he want he even wants to try to get with, and then he has to make sure their big athletic bodies don't actually destroy him in the act. Mm. Yeah, I, again, though. Death by snoo snoo. <laughs> well, I guess if I mean, I've I, heard of true stories where guys like died because they, you know, the pillows smothered them to death. There are literal true horror stories. Watch a thousand ways to die. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, huh. so, so, would you say this is based on a uh, real life view? I mean, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, says, my okay. wife looks like that. Well, good, good on you, bro. Good on her, too. Congratulations. <laughs> Lijansky says, uh, Lance, wait up. Did you watch the eight-hour podcast? You must have a lot of free time. No. He is starting at the first couple podcasts. I, however, am in that podcast right now in my rewatch, <laughs> and it's glorious. I loved every minute of it. <laughs> which which uh, other podcast was that? The uh, the Kino's Journey one. Didn't the uh, Blood Death and Beyond one be go eight hours too? It might have, but Kino's Journey is the one I'm at right now, which is how yeah. I knew that we covered the uh, the uh, Metal Gear Solid game uh, oh. board in uh, podcast forty two because that's the. That's the Yormungand one that was literally right before <laughs> the Kino's Journey one. 
I was like, I, look, that's weird. <laughs> look, look, in responding to the comment of Lance must have a lot of time on his hands. No, I just yeah. allocate my time wisely and sometimes just falling. Well, clearly you don't if you're spending it with us. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm going to finish the joke now that I was about to make. I need something to fall asleep to. <laughs> hey, it gets me the watch times. <laughs> That's sure does. I, I literally, hey, um, what, since, since, you know what? I've never held back before, so I have a question actually on that. Does it still count you getting the full watch time if I watch in two or three times speed? Like if I'm actually just trying to like look for those timestamps. So, so what it gives me is the watch time at like so let me put it this way. Um it hurts the videos audience retention because it sees total amount of time on the video if you're watching it two times speed but you watch the whole video it's only giving me half audience retention okay but i don't care about the audience retention on eight hour podcasts because they're so long that, it, that i'm not really like it, it actually is killing the channel just F, so everybody knows <laughs> it's the entire reason why ricada has made his streams unlisted after he does them and is putting up what effectively for him are podcast clips mm -hmm. um is so that that is what keeps your channel alive. But I'm not at the point where I can put out that kind of content quickly right now. Maybe if we got, you know, if we were, if this was my full-time job, then maybe I would be able to, uh, to get podcast clips out weekly, you know, which would be a dream. I don't know that we'd ever be able to do it. Um, and that way the, the, the channel would constantly have content coming out, which would help it um, algorithmically so that it gets to more, people more often because mm -hmm. um, right now having all the content on the channel be super long stuff hurts the channel so bad because nobody wants to devote the time to it right which is specifically why when you actually go to the anime collector channel i make it kind of difficult to find the podcast in the playlists and stuff uh, on the main page because i want you to watch the other stuff first you know because that's where algorithmically it helps me the most now um when you watch it at two times speed uh, I do still get the watch time of the actual amount of time that you watched, right? Okay. So if the podcast was three hours and you watched it at two times speed and you watched the whole thing, then I'm still getting an hour and a half. Like, it, like it's not like it's hurting me in terms of the I overall just, watch time. So okay. um, if, you're, if you're just doing it to get through it faster, by the way, when I, in my rewatches, I watch it at 1.5 speed. Yeah, so well, at well, least. Well, and it's really time. weird because all of us sound like um, chipmunks Except for Augie, who doesn't sound different at all. <laughs> I I have listened to some of his like I I I've, I've rewatched his collection video and I went ahead and watched it pretty fast. He really his he really does come through pretty clearly at a faster speed. And I'm like, <laughs> right. how do you do this? But no, the re the reason I went back and started the stuff from the beginning just just to clarify from anyone's one because I love anime and I love collecting. You guys bring up some stuff that's actually interesting to me, and. So, so if I'm sitting there and actually like trying to get through it, but another reason I was like, why not just start from the beginning was because you were talking about, you know, you needing the watch time to keep from losing your monetization. Yeah. I'm like, I can kill so, two birds with one stone here. I, I, I oh, I'm sorry. It. Feed two birds with one scone for those who are stupid enough <laughs> to be offended. Uh, just real quick. Yes. Metal Gear Solid, such a good game for sure. Um, so I, I, I do want to say something. I looked up the official policy from YouTube regarding what happens if we dip below 4,000 hours worth of watch time. And just to be clear, we are trending that direction that it is going to happen. Okay. Especially because um, we're not, we have to be bringing in at least 18,000 minutes worth of watch time every 28 days for us to maintain monetization. Currently for the last 28 days, we're at 16,000, right? Even if we hold that, eventually we're going to dip out, right? Now on top of that, we have a bunch of content from the Vic Mignogna stuff uh, where, you know, stuff was going on. And so we had like, you know, uh, title Vic Mignogna court hearing, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, and that brought in a lot of watch time. And we're about to cycle that out throughout the year. We've got one coming up pretty soon. That's basically twice as much watch time as our normal um, podcasts are getting. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're about to lose that and replace it with one time. But the pod, the week before that, we didn't do a podcast a year ago. So we might be able to catch that up. Right. So, um, I'm, I would still like to remain above 4,000 hours, but just so that it's clear, I did look up the policy 
and YouTube claims, though I don't like to take YouTube at their word, <laughs> YouTube claims that if you dip below 4,000 hours worth of watch time, you will not be removed from the partner program right away. They are going to look at whether or not your channel is still producing content before they like get you out of the program. Because, because and they specifically so say that your content has to be videos <clears throat> and or the community tab. So as long as I'm posting content to the community tab, I should be able to skirt by for another month or two. In other words, uh, lose. I you should have taken my advice sooner. <laughs> I have totally taken your advice. You just haven't been paying attention. <laughs> um, anyway, so I, I just want to say I do appreciate it. I do appreciate people watching um, older episodes of the podcast and whatnot. Uh, and I am working really hard <laughs> to uh, – to get timestamps put in um, for older content. I've got about seven, I think, so far out of the 137 podcasts so far. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm on a great track. <laughs> but uh, eventually, um, and I'll talk about this more in, in the coming months, but uh, I am actually, I've discovered a way that I can sort of gamify us doing the podcast to make it better, right? Um, and one of the ways that I'm doing that is to cr change up how the payouts are going to work um for the host to allow us to uh uh diversify it by a contribution bonus you get from doing things like timestamps and and certain other things that that I don't have the time to do on a weekly basis due to my current living conditions right so anyway that's we'll we'll talk more about that in the future um but I just wanted to um I just wanted to to kind of address it real quick and let you guys know that uh, I am actually working pretty fucking hard behind the scenes for this podcast. In fact, for those of you who don't know, I have recently reached back out to Robert J. Woodhead, and I am a, I am I have been given the green light to submit a uh, uh, to submit oh. a proposal to him for him to send off with a tr in a, in a, a translated version of it for us to Kenichi Sonoda for the logo. So um, if you guys have any ideas for what we should do for the logo or what we should send us to Kenichi Sonoda to request, I don't know that there's no guarantee that he's actually going to resp respond and say, yeah, I'll do it. He give me $800 or whatever it's going to be. I don't know, you know, but, um, but if you guys have ideas for what represents the podcast and you think that we should send it as our proposal, please let me know. Cause I'm drawing up a blank right now. Uh, and I, I mean, I'll sit down at some point and figure out exactly what to say, but if you guys have ideas, it would get me started. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, throw that out there. Now <clears throat> let's rag on how people look. I have way too you were so, dollars. you were so on yeah, board with that, that as, I, <laughs> as I clicked on that, you had already made it and I'm like, Oh no, mouse away. Anyway. All right. So original English light novel from Ash, <laughs> from ass debuts on March 1st. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> tell me how good you think this artwork is, and I'll tell you why you're right. I mean, wrong. <laughs> I mean, I like it, but at the end of the day, I have no the idea. The length of the arm about. is weird. <clears throat> Who her? So, arm you know, the arm. That's what my wife said. She said that the arm looks weird. I, I actually don't think. It's I think that it's bad. more that the shoulder doesn't. Uh, uh, adhere to the perspective as well because it doesn't really get larger or smaller. Yeah, oh, so, yeah. Her, so her, we, her, her we've talked about there. this. We've talked about this with focal length on a camera and how it can give you this weird distorted look where it's it's basically an orthographic perspective here. Um, but the thing, the the major issue with this is the is the um, the lighting, shading, and you know, like the what do you call it? Uh, the inconsistency with uh, lighting sources, but. <clears throat> The thing that, that draws my eye in, we've got this line going up here, and we've got this line coming down here. So when I look at this, I can't help but fill in the rest of this as a boob that comes way out here. And then comes <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I don't know what kind of porn you've been watching, but mine doesn't do that. <laughs> so to be fair, you do see the 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 more like drawn out image. Also, the belly button is in a not good place. <laughs> Should be like probably slid back a little bit over here <clears throat> but uh anyway um i do like the uh the logo which is probably just a font uh but they were so lazy that they couldn't put the stroke effect or the the drop shadow um 
like they couldn't connect the layers before applying the drop shadow. I guess that would be hard for them, considering that the drop effect on this one is bigger than the one on this one. Uh, but the uh, this is like overlapping. Anyway, I don't know why I took the time to just complain about this and tell uh, Alex no, Garcia wow. to go die <laughs> for his art. <laughs> All right, moving on. Oh, Sentai Filmworks to release Baki anime on home video. All right. <clears throat> the Netflix Baki. The complete yeah. collection Come release on. will include the original Japanese audio with, Eng with English subtitles as well as an all-new English dub. Mm -hmm. Sentai Filmworks did not state whether its English dub was a new Show production me. specifically made for the new release or the same dub used on Netflix. I'm going to say option number two. But that's just me. I'm gonna. But the thing the is thing. that if there's if there's only um, if there's only ever been one English dub, why would you refer to it as a new English dub? Right. Yeah. You know. To to falsely get views and people look at. Oh my god, it's a new English dub. It's as new as the show. Yep. Yeah. It's new to you, thus it's legal. Ha the ha. Cover of the, oh, jizz. Okay, has the stroke effect. Jizz me. What? Studio Gisley, is this what this is a reference to? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Lashansky has been advancing the project without our knowledge, and he's like, he has, he's, us a, know. he's a uh, uh, there have been Gisley a few. hentai artist. Oh my god, what the fuck was that? Okay, who just uh, into the Reese, do, go ahead and do your uh, the right stuff things. Oh, you wanted to do the uh. Well, Cannon I mean, I can talk. I can talk about this now, <clears throat> real quick. I just, oh, I, I can just talk about that. Cannon Busters real quick. Go ahead, tell me about yeah. it. Oh, well, I can tell you that I uh, bought into the Kickstarter years ago and haven't seen jack shit from them. Oh, really? Was there a Kickstarter for it? Yeah, yeah. there wow. was, and I never got jack shit. Yeah. So, no, so you know, all, pretty much all the comments on the ANN article revealing this was like. Fuck that! I'm not supporting the Sean Thomas is bullshit. Yeah, well, because I got <laughs> fucked over on the Kickstarter. I'll say this: um, I haven't watched this. Uh, it doesn't I haven't look watched that it either. good. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't intend so Dan, to. Dan, you know how uh, you know how we've been enjoying some sour beers lately. Yes, and we, uh, we do mean literally sour beers. That's what they are. Yeah, beer. like we're we're drinking a sour ale, right? Like in in the literal sense, we're drinking a beer that is a sour sour. It's not yeah. bitter, it's sour. Yeah, anyway, so um, when I look at the artwork for this, I don't see anime. It's not yeah. anime. No, it's yeah. not. Yeah, well, it's anime. not. It's not, I know. But what I, do, what I see is the equivalent is if you said, mm, sour beer is so good, I'm going to make some of my own. So you grab a can of beer. What's sour? Lemon juice. And you pour <laughs> that in. It's the same thing, you know? I've, I've done that before. So that's kind of what I'm seeing here yeah. when I look at this is it's like um, there is that thing that is anime and then there's that thing where you're just trying to be anime but you don't know what's making the beer sour so your substitution sucks, you know? Honestly, anyway. I feel like it, it more lies in the guy over there. He just looks This guy weird. just out of nowhere right here? No, the one on the left. Mm. There's something... He doesn't look inherently anime. He... He looks kind of, I don't know. He looks like uh, he belongs in um, Get a Robo or something. Like, this is like a, a full on pull out of Get a Robo. This character weirdly reminds me of um, the character, the shorter guy in um, all of Leiji Matsumoto's work. This is clearly a Gurren Logan y thing. And then we've got this hand that is clearly, like, I'll be real. I'm going to be abundantly clear here. Looks pretty damn good, right? But it's CGI. And I can tell, because if you actually drew a hand, there's no way that you would draw it so nub nubby like that. <laughs> um, anyway, let's go into the... Uh, but uh, and, and of course, Funimation just determined that it was uh, it was worth getting a limited edition release. Of so, which doesn't of have a did. spine, uh, end label. Of, of course right. they did. Uh, how They wouldn't be woke otherwise. Like that, they, They'd lose... Wo <sighs> They're going to sink all kinds you of know, money. This might even look, get a premium release, man. Are you kidding me? Oh, it got one. Yeah, I'll, yeah, that's well, what I'm he's, saying. He's like, to it as, in addition to a limited edition, we get a premium. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so I, I'm, I'll, I'll say this. Look, they will pull out all thinking, the stops for this because they thinking, need to look woke. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about my white privilege lately, <laughs> and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what my white privilege is. As an artist, my white privilege is that my work will always be 
judged on its merit and not based on my skin color. And I, and I detest the idea that, look, I want to be clear right now. There are a ton of, of non-white artists They're that'll really knock your freaking socks off. But if you happen to have a name like LaShawn Thomas and you happen to get in with a company like Funimation, uh, well, they'll make your wildest dreams come true, except for the part where you feel fulfilled because you got there on your you know, non-black privilege or however woke privilege. I don't even know what the phrasing is. But yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed in this because I, like, I see so many of these creators who are putting stuff out. Like the Kickstarter stuff earlier was a little bit mean, but to be perfectly honest, their ideas are shit. They're shit. Yeah. And they're literally they're literally just trying to coast off of the well, it's Black History Month on Kickstarter. I'm black and let's do this. You know, because because fucking Kickstarter's jerking off everywhere. Ooh, black creators, we projects we love. Post that to the front page. Send out the emails and stuff. And it's like it's like at a certain point as an artist, you got to feel disgusting. Over the fact that you're only being you're being used, it, it is effectively it's tokenism. You're literally being used to to for some uh, company to fill a diversity um, quota. Well, I'm trying to say I'm trying to I'm trying to in my head Portman to woke and masturbate, and I, it's not coming out right. So I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> they're trying. They're not trying coming to. Out uh, right. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Let's so move I, on to right stuff. Let's move on because I've made this point a hundred times, but I just like I, right. I'm so yeah. I, I'm heartbroken I, for the fact that you just can't be another creator. Girl, I I dropped a hundred bucks into Cannon Busters, by the way. I backed well, hundred dollar deal. You got ripped. Was that supposed to give you a uh, a uh, Blu-ray? I don't fucking know what it was supposed to give me. I, I, I and you know what? Going back to what I said before, where you're gonna stick money in that you're not afraid to lose. Like I, I don't care that I've never got it. It kind of irritates me a little bit that they're now doing this like wide yeah. release, and all the people that backed it ain't getting shit. And but at the same time, it's like whatever. I, I, I don't care. But I'm never gonna back anything that this guy puts out ever again. Obviously, no. So I'm just yeah. yeah. You know what? They can go. Complete series, thank God. It doesn't say season one. Yeah, like the uh, this the, what's the his name? Trailer? Sean Thomas. He can go fuck himself. Sean, I don't care. Well, uh -huh. the, the, the trailer Tom. for this co-director of the Boondocks. He wasn't even the main director. <laughs> Look, the uh, I'll say that the um, the trailer for this looked like it was paint by numbers, um, like taking things from other shows without actually coming up with an original thought. It was like stealing and, you know, the Picasso quote, uh, good artists borrow, great artists steal. Uh, it was a lot of borrowing and not enough stealing. So you know? in the same vein, that, maybe, uh, what maybe I thought stealing is a little too, too on the nose racially. <laughs> yeah. And also no end label. So I don't want it. <laughs> no title on it either. It's a, uh... It's on uh, no clip mode or whatever it's called. <laughs> what the hell is Cause, that? Because the artwork headers. was just what, so good. We didn't want what to What is that? It looks like bootleg PS4 games. Blu-ray plus bonus DVD. Yeah. So look. In the, okay, that's I'll, I'll tell you exactly what the $100 tier had. It had, it was Sonic Burst. It had... Art of Cannon Busters Limited Edition Art Book Plus Cannon Busters Digital Download OST includes long shots rewards plus domestic shipping free five blah 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 five dollars. That's because so, of the limited edition art book, art cards, keychain. So the long okay. shot, the long shots that's obviously that Another you, know, tier. you got in addition to the rest of it included the Blu ray plus making of Cannon Busters feature plus wild bunch rewards, and then it goes down from there. So, well, yeah, there was a bunch of stuff I was supposed to get. The, the so they is, basically it, redeem your coupon for a free water, this. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Well, I, I feel like the sad thing is that Funimation's probably going to make a bank off of the uh, the people who are going to buy this off of supporting black creators and then never watch it. No, actually, page. I don't think this is going to sell well at all, to be honest. What the fuck? 64-page opening and ending songs booklet. AR enabled. Is it, is it textless in the opening and ending too? 
Critical Artbox streaming behind the scenes. You know, maybe I'm being a little bit too critical on it. 30 minutes. Can maybe I should watch it on. and then bag on it. Well, it's on Netflix, of, right? Well, it says on the back right there. Well, don't make it so easy. <laughs> what do you mean? And go to the bottom right. He says it's on Netflix. Yeah, Netflix. Mean, like, well, I'm not watching it. Right there, Netflix. Is that the that manga like entertainment logo? Good. I think it is the manga know. entertainment it is. logo. I think it is. Yeah. Albino though. Yeah. Why is it? Why is it all white? That's racially insensitive. <laughs> White face. Just because they put it on a black white face. Fuck Jeez. my life. Hang on. <sighs> I don't know. It'll the the racial bullshit will always be lost on me. Come on. Where's the where did the next part go? We're we're supposed to be the y'all are supposed to be the open chest oh, anime podcast. At this at this point it felt like it's heart surgery. <laughs> Can you read that? No. Uh, is hold it on. not magnifying for you? Hold on, no. hold on. I, I, I have You're a 5,000 times. sharing the there. window, not your desktop. Okay, yeah. Hold uh, on. It does say <laughs> manga, so that's weird. Huh. All right, anyway. Netflix, Funimation, TVMA. Holy crap, yeah. you changed. Infinite Dendrogram. I am so disappointed with this series. Like, it started out good, but then well, by the end of it, I was like, why did I sit through this? Funimation wasn't disappointing with it because you're getting a uh, limited edition. Uh, I mean, wow. I'm sure they were such the, beautiful it, artwork. Yep, just the blackness of the void. However, it's uh, it's how just, dare you? It's Black History Month. <laughs> it's only <laughs> slightly worse uh, than uh, the Weathering with You one. It's well, that's good. It's only slightly worse. You talking mm -hmm. about the show itself or the limited edition? No, there was, the limited, yeah, limited edition. edition. I'm at the, I'm Honestly, at it's superior in some ways because it actually has like that pattern going to the back. I'm I'm honestly like about to stop unless thing unless something comes up that I just have to have stop buying freaking Funimation limited you edition because they're I just don't feel like they're worth it anymore. They're Unfortunately for me, fun. that seems to be uh, a lot of things. Look, it's on that arm right there. Is it misshapen? No, why is it? That's an arm, right? Why is it like all hairy on like his forearm or whatever the fuck that is? Oh, oh is it a scratch like on his face? I guess. Weapon, I can tell you that. Nah, he's got something on his forearm, but it's probably just scratches like on his face. All right, oh. next one. Let me overanalyze every artistic thing we look at. New game. Hey, like new game watch club. Uh, essentials, which means it didn't do this that good. good <laughs> this was a really good show. Well, that means, yeah, I was going to say, that means it it's probably cast. a great show. <laughs> it, it had a wonderful cast. I, I I don't know. I just loved it. It was fun to watch. I thought it was nice. I just really, really did not like one part, which was how they uh, really, really glossed over the whole getting the hang of 3D modeling. Because... She just was like, it's just like, here's a book, and then next scene you see, okay, and she has a complete 3D model that's, sure, it's like uh, more polygon-esque, but it's like, you just glanced over a huge learning curve. Oh, Pro you realize that. Protag privilege, I don't know. I understand where you're coming from, though. It's like people learning how to play guitar in fucking anime. It's, it's like, like hey, I started, oh, I, I can already before. play uh, Through you the Barn, sure. the Flames on Expert. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Look at so me. I want to address, address real quick. Otaku says said, Otaku. "Looks like something you see in How to Draw a Manga Book." Yep, for referring to Ash. from Ash, yeah, from Ass, as I'm gonna call it from now. <laughs> well, technically, you could pronounce it like that, thanks to the English language. <laughs> so, Ace Fish, Attorney Essentials, way. yay! Well, that'll be cheap to buy now. Okay, that's nice. Oh, I need to find a um, I need to find a scene from this for. That Hitler video. Attorney. Lashonsky which I, classics which, lines. I'm batting are for a thousand the, on things that people who've never been to this podcast before are going to hear and think, "Wow, oh, yeah. Black History Month, man!" So, <laughs> here's one, a comment: This is the Kickstarter was funded. How did you not get anything? Well, that happens a lot. There's a lot of crowdfundings. They get funded, <laughs> and then the people don't get don't see shit. It's yeah. Lashonsky's that, that was that a rhetorical is, question. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm addressing his uh, classics but comments. I don't really. Oh, sorry. Never mind. Or uh, Dan, 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 don't don't give up your spot. Keep talking. <laughs> no, it's you steamroll to... over after him until he he shuts up. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Anyway, Go ahead. Uh, here. Uh, so Lashonsky saying, uh, "What about the classics line?" Um, so essentials. Like I'm pretty sure this is their save. Yep. It's like for ser the reprint of series that don't do that well, so they sell it for a lower price. Classics is as usual. They're literally they're literally just putting it in a new package and, exactly. and lowering the price. Well, they're, they're they reprint the lower. package. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and the classics is uh, reprint for something that sells well that they keep at like the same price. All so that they can they can they, they know it's going to sell well, so they keep the price up there so they can make more money off of it. Yeah, yeah. And they're they're just putting it out as a new thing so that so that you know people will see it and think, oh, this is good. Okay, I'll, Speaks, I'll get it. Uh, Dan, did you want to continue your thought? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, Dan, continue your thought, and I have something that I want to hit. That I, I want to bring up about the essentials, the classics, and such. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm glad Dan didn't have anything to say, so that <laughs> so that we can just keep <laughs> going over him. <laughs> I think I think he was serious when he said he's. Good. Mm -hmm. If Lance wants to, okay, yeah, right. go ahead. I'm done. Um, yeah. All right. What I wanted to bring up is, okay, the <laughs> SAV edition. I've bought a few of those that didn't have DVD, didn't have Blu-rays in them. It was perfectly laid out for two DVDs. Was that a really a thing? I have. I don't have many SAVs that have only that. What? What, but, are, you, what are you talking about? Like uh, they were missing this one, for example. No, it's not missing disc. It's not even the case. It was just a, it was a DVD it. save edition. Instead it was of a, a DVD only SAVE, mm -hmm. and of course I wasn't going to take it back to FYE when I opened it up for twenty dollars. But I bought like the example Baca and Test. Yeah, um, that's like the it, only example I know of that they actually don't have like a reprint uh, in the highest El, quality. El Cav El Casador uh, de la Bruja. El Cavador de la Bruja does not have uh, Blu-rays. That's never been released on Blu-ray though. Yeah, but it's still an SAVE that they claim. I don't know what point you're getting. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to. I'm There's just no rule that says an SAV has to be a Blu ray. In fact, okay, they've been that notoriously DVD only DVD, yeah. since uh, 2015 that's, or so. That's why Augie has so many of them because he. Which I don't own, was, if I remember right, DVD. I, I want to I address real quick. Legendary Anime anime JP Fan 2 says I just spent $130 for a quintessential, quintessential two, triplet. Quintuplets, uh, yeah, but he put triplet as in triplet, probably. Um, I don't know. He, it's it's probably funny just he brings this up because me and Lance were discussing quintessential quintuplets last night, and right. essentially, normally I'd say it's worth it, but uh, uh, God, <laughs> I'm just conflicted. Why is it $130? Didn't Funimation it's release out of print. it? It's already out of print because it's, it's so limited. Awesome. It's already out of print. Oh, the limited. Oh, okay. But uh, but hold on. Like uh, the thing that uh, me and Lance were talking about last night, I was like, "Dude, uh, it has to be insert girl here who gets it." But it's real. They're also really pushing for this other girl who has like uh, no. It it doesn't feel like any chemistry with Mister Guy. But uh, then I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna spoil myself, and I'm like, you know, it would be funny if it was just insert character here, and then I look it up, and it's that character. And I'm like, what? What? So I'm like yeah, traumatized no. right now, he, and I'm like, he, he I don't know how to feel. The, man. Footum has literally had the experience that a lot of people wanted from the show, where it's like, hey, your favorite girl is the one that's the that ends up with you know the quote unquote protagonist, which the show is more about the theme, more about the quintuplex than it is him. You kind of gain to know him. Did you just this change my name? More... <laughs> Did you just change my name? I just I got look. I, I am I'm marking this one. <laughs> I am Marlon. We we'll timestamp that. <laughs> timestamped. All right. The world will <laughs> never know. I just got timestamped. Um, three twenty-seven fifty right now. Get a tramp uh, stamp of the timestamp. So, so quintessential was, quintuplets to me sounds like a uh, please twins with more steps. <laughs> no, no. Quintessential quintuplets is better than please twins. Like I, I had to, I had to force myself to watch Please Twins and Please. But Twins. does Laura Jill Miller voice one of the characters? No, then you're yes. wrong. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the thing, the thing is though, is that it was supposed to be, um, it was supposed like for a lot of people. I've had a lot of people tell me this. 
is that it for them it was the whole hey my favorite girl you know just like you know like in harem animes where they like you quote unquote have the idea like hey you pretend you're the protagonist which is what a lot of people do that which you're is supposed to kind of goofy that's what i was told like is that years what, ago that, that was that was a that was a that was a concept that was thrown at me so real quick but, i just want to address real quick i just want to okay. i want to address real quick um uh, Lichonsky said, I've noticed that Funimation is hammering down the essentials. Uh, but, we addressed but what about that. the costs? Yeah, we addressed that. So you guys said that uh, they put the ones that don't sell well. So he says, so nothing has been selling well lately? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. He also says to Dan, if you didn't get anything, you can report it to Kickstarter and try to get your money back. I, uh, good I, luck. I, I don't care. It's been I, so many years now. Yeah. So many years, uh, I don't care. You know, I think, I think it would be better if when COVID ends, which will be after we're all dead, um, and uh, we go From back COVID. to Anime Expo and we, we confront LaShawn Thomas. Oh, my God. Uh, like, I'll just film it, paparazzi's telling you, hey, you, yeah, you, I gave you $100 on Kickstarter, you son of a bitch. You know? <laughs> Honestly, that would be pretty liberating uh, if yeah. you guys did that. <laughs> yeah. That'd be hilarious. Let me know when you do this. The thing is, is that about the quintessential quintuplets. Um, oh, there's another comment. Good. It's on you. Oh, uh, you can do this next comment. I, I, you can go and finish the comments. No, I'm, I just I was really trying to follow this. Good. Sorry, okay. sorry. Good. Uh, what Mr. I was trying Fires. to say was though, <laughs> is that it's people. People all wanted that experience, and it's coming out and being made pretty clear that it's one girl. Which I'm understanding where Footnum's coming from because I started rewatching the series after me and him talked about it. I've been and the girl that I'm cheering for is in the lead, so to speak. Um, and then, but then girl in the... second place is being really like imposed, yet she has the least like chemicals going on with guy. And turns out it's neither of them. Um, it turns out to be one girl who I don't want to ruin. Well, it's. Are spoilers safe here? Do I just say spoilers if I just say? Uh, let's just I'm say just gonna... no, unless it's a watch club. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Because, because what I, I wouldn't point out directly because we don't want to ruin legendary anime scene. JP fan 2's experience, yeah. right? He just um, spent one hundred thirty dollars for that shit. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, ba basically, <laughs> let me just put it like this: watch every clip. It will all of a sudden make sense because it did not make sense till Fudnam said what he said to me. Because I've already read like well, these are things I, you can only retrospectively actually okay. understand that oh, yeah, it was yeah, hidden yeah. in plain so sight. Clearly, since you guys both love this so much, eventually we're going to have to do it for a watch club. Absolutely. So let's just uh, let's just leave it at that, and we can have that conversation when and that this day is comes. How you get Brad to do something? Continue. And now we're going to look at <laughs> Anus Attorney Season One. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Plunder. <laughs> part coming. one. This one's getting a Blu-ray DVD combo for the standard edition. That's surprising. Uh, wow. Is it because it has a... Yeah, I don't know. Limited edition? Do, is that that there is a limited edition, yes. It huh. could be that they're... Why does the limited edition different. have such an ass cover compared to the other one? Why well, is the girl compared from... to the black... Same uh, fucking the image of the guy on the front and the spine. Oh, I thought you were talking about that show with the, like, uh, it was just completely black with patterns on it. Yeah, well, but look at look at the same goddamn image of him on the spine. <laughs> it's just I don't I don't know what it is with the look. I'm not trying to throw shade here, but I have to bring a question. If someone from Foundation ever watches this, what's what wrong with y'all? <laughs> Why? Like, listen, come on, guys, you guys have so much creative potential. I, <laughs> I just don't like I, the I, borders I that they add. At least, I just feel I feel like they could take some like. Take some more liberty and do, do shit that's like, okay, hey, we've got this all this different concept art. Yeah. I mean, I understand well, if it's like a pain in the ass and they've only got one thing, but it would, I would really appreciate if like you're stuck with like some kind of like limitations. Let it's the same one on here too. I, I had this conversation with my cousin earlier today because he was complaining about Funimation, um, at least because their website and stuff like that, trying to watch stuff on their website, and he's saying that they're like to stream videos. I guess their streaming service sucks. And I said, Funimation it's, it's not is a trash company. Accessible. It's not accessible to the legally to the blind. Legally yeah. blind. <laughs> no, I, I brought that up. Ever since they got bought out by, was it Sony, right? Sony bought mm -hmm. them? Yeah. Like, it, it's just, it's all about, you right. know, money, basically. And it's like, they're going to do the absolute bare minimum in order to squeeze out profits. Yeah. Oh, come Which, on, dude. My I fucking mean, account had only subs on it. 
for a minute. I don't understand how that even happens. I had English dubs prioritized, and I couldn't watch dubs. And then I logged in about a, logged in a few weeks ago, and it literally said, you have to be a premium subscriber to see this content. I look up their account active. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. How? They don't care. They literally don't care. Hey, look, it's Nekapara. Because they, they're backed News, by a major corporation, it, so they don't they don't give it. They don't. Does they it include don't care. OVA? That we paid money for? It? No. <laughs> Good, because I think uh, what is it? Tales of Zisteria really cucked me when I, I bought I the oh, the go. limited edition uh, just to get that OVA. Careful! Then, don't show any of those screenshots, or else this podcast will get the same fate as uh, ninety four, where Nekopara rights holders get rid of us. What? <laughs> Podcast 94 is blocked worldwide because we showed a clip from Nekopara. Oh. But, uh, yeah. Wars, the animation. Ooh, cl- what, what is that called? Oh, no, I thought there was something else. Um, I actually heard this was good, and I saw Yeah, it but it's CG. Oh, I don't know about the new one, but all the old ones are freaking great. Oh, okay. I'm just, I, the reason I was bringing it was like, anyone recommend it? Because I usually go, I'm going off recommendations here lately for some reason. I saw I mean, it. Somebody else wants to buy it for me. <laughs> hey, same. Actually, uh, yeah. here here's a side I'll note. A uh, you I'll can literally make a public video of me unboxing if someone wants to buy it for me. You can buy the UK region Soccer Wars OVA collection, and it will work on your region one player because that seems to be the case for mine. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, Dan, you asked about Plunderer. Plunderer is my favorite anime. <laughs> I'm good, worth buying it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know, there you go. There's a uh, pretty good wow, sarcasm. I, I mean, uh, it, I, no, don't, I don't think it is. Really, uh, stupid. Oh. Uh, but I, then I, they say Nekopara suck lolly similar to Rio work never done. So I, I, my, my thoughts on my thoughts on Plunderer. I watched it weekly and it became a chore. Mm. Oh, Plunder is my favorite anime. OMG. Worth buying, and what was the one he said afterwards? Not what I want. How do I? Nekopara. Oh, the Nekopara on. one. One Piece Collection yeah. 25 DVD uncut. Glad to see that we're back to DVD. One Piece. Are you sure you're glad to see that? <laughs> I'm gonna dox him. He's not glad. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand yep, why that's, they that's just don't doxing. <laughs> <laughs> one Piece season 11 part two. Yeah, but now we just have to wait for, uh, I don't know, hopefully the month after to get a Blu-ray? Or sorry, sorry, a Blu-ray uh, only com- collection or whatever. I, mean, I, think, the I think the original stupid. Blu-ray, I like the original One Piece look good enough. Wait, hold on, just what put, was just put like 50 episodes in one box and sell it for $40, I'll buy it. Yeah, it would this... almost be better instead of getting us Blu-rays if they did SD Blu-rays of One Piece and gave it, gave it to us way easier. <laughs> Yeah, and it was just so larger. Just just let, it, let us have the original. Like I don't know. The, col- the collections are already quite easy. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, I, I, I miss the don't give it up Zolo moments. <laughs> I, I for one, actually really like Zolo as a name instead of Zoro. Me too. Now, if, now I, I feel, feel like, like I'm... I feel like they said, well, Zolo was the name that four kids used. And Zoro's public domain, so let's just use it. Lashonsky says, anyone else notice that One Piece is getting Blu-ray DVD releases? Uh, yes. We have covered this. Twice but, now. Uh, hey, yes. This is the first time lashonsky has been in the comments in a long time. I know, I know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm giving the benefit of the doubt. So uh, what I was, the reason I went to this one is just to check out. The, so the next collection is where things are going to start getting interesting. Okay. Because so collection twenty, collection twenty six is where things are going to start getting interesting and see how they, how they do things. Okay. Because so, it would be this set and the next one, and this is mm. the last DVD only one. Yeah. So uh, what is it? Lashonsky says the HD version of One Piece season one at least on Crunchyroll looks really good. Uh, so on Crunchyroll. They have all of the episodes that were only SD um, in HD remastered. They, I'm pretty sure they're all upscaled, but um, I think it, Netflix has those as well. Maybe, but um, what is it? Uh, it's the Dragon Ball Z treatment, though, where they crop 
I'm pretty oh, yeah? sure they crop no. it because it's 16 by 9. Yeah. I don't know how else they did maybe, that. Maybe they're just ridiculous and dumb and don't know what they're talking about. So are we going to talk about the uh, origin story of Hero Hay? That's what I thought as soon as I saw Legend of Hay. <laughs> Legend just of how Hay. How became a hero? Is this a Chinese movie? It, it's it's sure nice to see Chinese cartoons every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen a lot more in the future, I think. So Mandarin and Cantonese and English. Oh. Okay, so it is a ch literal Chinese cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is genuine Chinese cartoons. So this is bet, you know what? You know what? You'll never see her ankles. Right, and that's it for releases. And it, the, right. now, all the jokes will be about now that we're done with releases, do we want to actually address uh, E. Castro's comments that we're ignoring? <laughs> e. Castro? 339. EC. He says, Quintessential Quintuplets was really fun to read as a manga weekly because it was basically like watching sports and discussing who was in the lead at any given time. <laughs> that sounds... Uh, that sounds like uh, not a lot of fun to me, but okay. <laughs> well, that's because you're... A lame -o. Uh It's fun series for sure. I love that description. And the official manga translations actually do keep it as Zolo as the name, and as the thumbnail of the one podcast shows me uh, showing on the phone. Yep. What? Isn't the his name in the original Japanese Zolo? What about the thumbnail? What? In the thumbnail, there's in, me in holding my phone out. In one of the thumbnail of the that... podcast, you're showing he's showing the scan from the. The yeah, scan, yeah. it's Viz. It's from showing. Whatever. Whatever. You're going like, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. 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 All right. So, uh, Reese. Yes. Two seven. Director Tomonori Sudo draws stunning digi jacket illustration for Face Day Night Heaven's Feel Three Blu-ray. Yeah. Three. There you go. I got Heaven's Feel Two Blu-ray for like twenty bucks. And the likes title. How? Day for deals. Anime fix. Um, comes out March 31st in Japan. So we'll probably Good God, have it's it. taking forever. Yeah, so we'll probably right. have our release like probably in August, maybe. Of when? So, <clears throat> Metroid and Pokemon Composer demo recordings to be released in a new collection, The Lost Tapes, to include in-depth interview of Hi Hirokazu Tanaka by musician and collection cur curator Yo uh, Yusuke Sato. Uh, so there you go. That's the thing. It's going to have a bunch of like songs that were considered for games that didn't make the final cut, I I'm guessing. Continuing, Viz Media announces a complete Demon Slayer manga box and more. But Already? they're making an anime of probably everything, so what's the point? <laughs> Well, it's just the thing interesting. I really want to share the final with you, volumes aren't even well, out. Look, really. look, Fudnam, you got to understand, bro. The manga is in any in every way is going to be better than the anime because it's all about the art. But the thing is, everyone says it's about the flashy things like animation. So, <laughs> okay. but dude, if you flip the pages really fast, you get the flashies. Legendary. You also anime get the, you get the face. I'm going to address this comment again. Nekopara suck lolly. Similar to Rio, work never done. Such, not suck. Okay, I'm gonna read it again. Neko para such lolly, similar to Rio, work never done. It still doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold, let, let me let me let me read let me read this like uh let me try to read this in in uh, dysfunctia. Is JP your uh, native tongue? Uh, legendary tongue. anime JP fan too. Okay, hold on, hold on. This might be what he's trying to say. Neko para suck lolly and then period <laughs> similar to Rio work and then it was never finished oh, okay. oh no no no, no. We, Rio's, the Rio's work is never done okay yeah, so yeah. It's, it's Neko Par is, is lolly such similar to yeah yeah I know I'm, yeah. I'm giving you Rio's time, work but... is never done <laughs> yeah so this is why we joined the uh, capitalized case uh club or whatever gang <laughs> uh this gang this that's is what we're this is the no, just, just giving you a hard time man the but, uh, hey, club. hey legendary jp fan don't worry man i'm not giving you a hard time i'm just being a total asshole as usual i'm giving you if a you've hard ever time looked at my comments you have no idea <laughs> i have dysfunction 
Okay, continue. Can I just <laughs> open up? Lishotsky says the oh, LE of it comes with a baggie of COVID. <laughs> I don't know what this is a reference to, but I like it. <laughs> Nekaparo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. It comes with COVID. We're all capital. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the real thing that I'm sharing this article for. Yeah. Liz. Hideo Kojima wrote a book titled The Creative Gene. But on the cover it says... <laughs> Opening flitter. On the cover, it says. Oh, yeah. Well, this is going fast. On the cover, it <laughs> says. <laughs> on the cover, it says the gifted gene and my lovable memes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that joke will land in the OCA podcast clip where I cut out all the. <laughs> Uh, also, there's the uh, Animal Crossings, One Piece, Volume 71 through 90. Okay, what I was trying to say earlier, before I got ran over, was they're announcing this Demon Slayer box set before the individual volumes are even out in the stage. Yeah. So they're fucking over their individual volume sales on people who haven't bought Half the series yet. It's like, hey, oh, man, I'll coming. just buy the whole box set. I guess well, it depends no. on if, if they actually if you've put it already in like a box acquired order, 22. If you've already acquired like 22 volumes, you're not going to go buy the box no, set. No, it's, really. it's only like, like, 20, like 20 or something right now. Well, regardless, Jesus, he's grabbing a random number. It's not about being accurate. Yeah, I'm sorry. I am happy to see Mao getting uh, a release over here. That's Rumiko Takahashi's latest work. Yeah, you would have thought it was Yashihime. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Actually, that's true. Yashihime never got a manga. Uh, right. They just went straight to anime. Huh. Is volume 20 is out, so 21, weird. 22, and 23 are not out yet. Okay. What I don't understand is, like, okay, how does that, outside, outside of making people who are impatient want to jump on this, how does that make any good sense to go, hey guys, you know the the edition we usually release after two or three years of the manga being out and letting us get those individual sales and then the idiots turn around and rebuy this? They're just throwing that all out the window. Plus, Because usually you rebuy this when you bring your original copies by, you know, jacking off over the art. Also, um, the, uh, on the Demon Slayer ones, the, Viz, the Shonen Jump logo is going to change halfway yeah. through. That's like, giving a pain. Just like, you can see it right here. That's why you need. That's why you need the completed box collection because it's got something to cover that shit. <laughs> okay, one last question, and I'll leave it alone. Does this look like it comes? Does the does? Is there anything? It does look like it comes. In a <laughs> Every day, nice twenty-three days in a row. Okay. All right. Does it? Hey, at least something gets you there. But does oh, it come God. in like a nice case or something? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it comes it, in it a cardboard box. It doesn't have it like pictured, but I assume it will. Okay. That, 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 that's this is an art, not final. It doesn't even have a date on it yet. Yeah, it just says Plus fall twenty twenty one. All right. Anyway, Kickstarter. Who knows? All right. Anime figures damaged in earthquake. Tokyo manufacturer offers to repair them for free. Wow. Now, that's nice. If you guys didn't know this, there was like a seven point earthquake recently in Japan. Almost 10 years to the day after yeah, the that Tohoku. Anime. What? Yeah, that anime. Uh, Tokyo Magnitude 7.0 or 7 whatever. 8.0. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so they are actually claiming that the earthquake uh, is actually an aftershock of the 2010 disaster. Oh, really? Now, uh, yeah. Like they're saying, well, which kind of makes sense because if you think about how tectonic plates work, it's effectively that. It which got, one, you know, a slipping plate. Well, yeah, the, the, the plates, you know, rupt, like massive movement happened because of like them shifting and whatever. And then it, it locked into a place. And then over time, they're going to loosen up again. And, and anyway, but I have uh, provided some footage here uh, to On show the you scene. just how bad, just how bad some of the, uh, the earthquake actually was. Yeah, the damage and whatnot. Uh, and I've also included the true reason for the earthquake, which is actually not that it was an aftershock. Save my comment a minute. 
Okay. <laughs> I hope that was worth all the delay. In the beginning. It really was not. Well, that one specific clip was not. <laughs> I gotta say, actually, those those cats took the earthquake very well. <laughs> I mean, I mean, those cats really, really, really took a minute to realize what the hell was going on. Oh, I, I well, like the thing that. is, what does the cat do? They don't have some or earthquake protocol they follow. It's like, well, I'm already like. I'm what? good. I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm not, just, I'm not. Fuck it. I'm not getting up. I like, oh, I go. Yeah. I, I like, like the am one. I in danger? Am I in danger? <laughs> like the one ran away, and the other one just kind of like, ah. Uh, yeah, the uh, one he's like, ah. Uh, they're, they're like, they're like is, is, are they under the bed again? Like, that's a weird place to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but if they go under the bed, the bed collapses from the earthquake, and then no, no, yeah. I'm talking, I'm talking, no, 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 I was making, I'm about to break my reference. I was making a joke like the cats are like bandit doing it under the bed again. All right, <laughs> one second, guys, stall for a minute. So I, I'm gonna run and take a leak. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> also, um, Lishansky was saying the the uh, limited edition of the Legend of Hay. <laughs> Hello, I was a wolf. I don't know what the what Stop is, but uh, typical podcast tonight. This one right here. Wolf 101, it's nice to have you back, actually. Oh. It's nice to see a familiar lack of face. Yep. Keeps <laughs> all the time. But yeah, uh, to continue what I was saying, Lashansky for the One Piece is uh, apparently uh, episodes uh, from like 205 or 6 or whatever onward is all native HD. Yeah. So it's quite possible that we'll get a lot of backlog of One Piece on Blu-ray. But it also furthers to the point of why I'm pissed that they haven't released any sooner. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here's over everybody who, who bought like all the all the voyages and then decided to buy the collections after they finally decided to give us the collections, mm. just to try and save shelf space. And then they're gonna do the Blu-rays finally. I think I just bought. I think I just picked up up to. I'm missing a couple, but I have like 17 volumes that I, 17 of the collections that I own. I don't. They're not all in order. Like, I'm missing, I think, two or three of them. So, 17 going up to whatever volume it was was out when I bought. 
Did you order me the right thing, Lashonsky? <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, that's good to hear. Uh, I was wondering about that. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a lot of uh, the new Digimon TCG, uh, like a lot of sets and products that are coming out, and I'm like, I can't keep up with it because, uh, like, I'm not buying all of these uh, English boxes coming. <laughs> well, I'll take whatever it is, Lashonsky. You know, <laughs> whatever it is you got. Um, oh, tamers, as in like uh, the tamer, I guess, kit or whatever. Because I thought it meant like specific to season three. Okay, so it probably is the right thing. Yeah, Quack. it's more or less like uh, you get. I think it's the. Uh, is it eight or sixteen? Like a uh, limited edition print of the. Like uh, some of the cards, and then you get like a deck box, a play mat, and all this crap for the TCG. Did not ship to Canada. All right, Brad. Now that you're okay. back, did not ship to Canada. I want to uh, say you guys all Canada. jumped right into action when I asked you to stall. It wasn't like you know the Megazord was formed with a fist and a foot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, I'm I mean, just he won't it. <laughs> <laughs> We Mr. Can. Quackers uh, provided the musical cues. And the, the soundtrack. <laughs> All right, no, you guys are fine. Okay. So anime figures damaged an earthquake. Tokyo man manufacturer offers to repair them for free. A new lease on life for figures from series about rebirth. Wait a minute. So is it specifically going to be... Only stuff? Only isekai? It looks like it is only going to be re-zero. Aww. Last Saturday night, a powerful earthquake shook northeastern Japan. They Technically, chance, an please. aftershock of the 2011 Tohoku earthquake, the epicenter of Saturday's 7.1 magnitude, magnitude earthquake, was located off the coast of Fukushima Prefecture. Thankfully, no lives were lost. But there was plenty of infrastructure and property damage. That includes damage to otaku property. Oh, as several on. anime Stop. fans <laughs> as, <laughs> as several anime fans posted on social media about <laughs> about figures in their home toppling and breaking during the shaking. Hearing these stories, Tokyo-based figure maker Eastream has decided to step in and help. The company is offering repair services free of charge to people who purchase two of its if it's re-zero starting life in another world anime figures. Uh, the crystal dress version of Amelia, pictured above, and Rem seen below. Only to you got to have bought both of them? Only to those two people. Only to those people. That's <laughs> That's not as cool as it sounded at first. Yeah, I was like really like, oh, this is cool. Like, no, it's like, if, hey, you bought the ten thousand dollar REM figure, like the, <laughs> the, the full body giant life sized <laughs> figure, then sure, yeah, we'll give you a new one on the house. <laughs> since since we only made you know nine thousand dollars off of that purchase you made. <laughs> um. Those beautifully intricate water effects and dress ripples look exactly like the sort of things that would snap off uh, when falling from a shelf. Yeah. Considering the figures are priced at, oh, it's only 325 US dollars? This is a major savings for fans versus having to repurchase them. Oh, and Eastream isn't being stingy about offering repair services for only these two figures. The company just started last year, and so far, these are the only two figures that have been completed and shipped to buyers. Oh, so still sort of sounds like they're being stingy. <laughs> but why repair fans' figures instead of just replacing them? According to an eStream spokesperson, seriously, I honestly thought that's that's literally what they were just going to do. Oh no, we're being muted. Don't censor me. <laughs> he can't hear me. Um. We believe the special thing about figures is that each one has its own expression for the character. Okay. And the people who buy them create memories and forge bonds with them. Well, see, here's the thing. We're repairing your figure instead of giving you a new one because you already claimed one with your jizz. <laughs> <laughs> How else am I supposed to read this? They create memories and forge bonds with them. When we saw the shock and sadness our customers were feeling uh, from their precious figures being damaged, we asked ourselves, 
We asked ourselves what we could do to help. So here's their tweet announcing the repair. The repair service is being offered to customers who purchased either the figures through Eastream's online store and who live in the prefectures of Fukushima, Iwate, Miyagi, Yamagata, Tochigi, or Saitama. Applicants are asked to send an email with attached photo of the damage of the damage figure to the address support at eStream.co.jp by February 22nd. Is that today? Oh, it is today. Get on it. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well. Thank you for that. <laughs> oh, and when it comes time to ship the figure, eStream asks that customers do so chakubarai, or with postage to be paid by the company upon delivery. Oh, because this really is a free service for their fans. Wow. Well, that's cool. Honestly, it's probably like the CEO is smoking and he's like, you know, if I bought one of our figures only for it to be destroyed in an earthquake, I'd, I'd just be stop buying figures. <laughs> I'd just stop buying figures altogether. You know. <laughs> uh, anyway, thoughts? Good concept, but you know, once you realize it's just for those two figures, that's kind of yeah. sucks. Like fuck everybody uh, else. Yeah, I didn't even know that uh, Rem was a uh, waterbender. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to watch this show. She's not even in season two. <laughs> uh oh, what? really? <laughs> watch Club Lane. Okay. McDonald's <laughs> Japan Happy Meal sets. Oh God damn it! Let me try that again. <laughs> McDonald's Japan Happy Meal sets. See Tanjiro and the gang donning uniforms. Um. So to further my argument that kids are watching this show in Japan. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Uh, that's it. That's all I got. Okay. Um, honestly, guys, I'll be real with you. Uh, I kind of feel like uh, skipping a lot of these and coming back to them in a future podcast because, quite frankly, so my, voice is, my voice is giving out. I feel kind of low energy today, and I feel like some of these would be really good to cover with more energy. But I'll go through a couple of these just to show them. This with honestly, uh, guys, just to be fake with you. <laughs> Just because so we like uh, to wrap up the podcast, you know, because, you know, a high AC does. You know, he never wants these things to go over three hours, ever. No. Well, ever. Well, we already failed on that on that uh, regard. Uh, Reese, you want to take this one away? <laughs> way, I, just stumbled, I just stumbled across <laughs> this in the uh, – it was in one of the Lupin discords. I just I just stumbled across it. Nothing new, I don't think. I mean, it is new, but <laughs> – it's a set of plates for 250 bucks. Oh, man, are you getting this for your girlfriend's wedding? The end. <laughs> he wants them for his birthday, if anybody wants to. I, I was like, break out the fine china. Yeah, you know what? I'm china. right there with him. I want that for my birthday, too, because, you know, it's coming up. And, and oh, uh, it, it took forever for this to, to load into StreamYard, but I watched the, so uh, the oh Demon Slayer... The Demon Slayer Valentine's art this thing. Is better. <laughs> and I thought this and this is this is not officially subbed, but um. Zenitsu swears so fucking much in those of like two minute OVAs. It is hilarious. I don't care if it's not official translation. It's so funny. But it's I for kids. Yes, exactly. That's my point. It's for kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well touche. <laughs> <laughs> uh, classic Studio Ooh, Ghibli film soundtracks there. are getting remastered on vinyl. So there you go. You can get some Joe Hisaishi on vinyl. Like, oh, no, it's not cool. No, we can hear you. Undress an Ukiyo-e woman out of her kimono with this Japanese magic towel hack. Wait, you can take her out of her kimono with that draw rack? I mean, I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather have her rack than the towel one, but if you know what I mean. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait, is that his dick or his finger? It's a hair dryer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's his robo penis. <laughs> okay, um, there you go. All right. 
Gorilla with Ron. <laughs> this is this is the article that was connected to the fat ass King Kong earlier. <laughs> Dan, when you left, I had the perfect time to drop it. So I already did. <laughs> Wait, Dan's gone. Damn. No, he's yeah. in that. No, he left earlier and uh, came back. And while he was gone, I dropped the King Kong big ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Did it hurt yeah, when so you dropped him? Gorillas with uh, elementary school student <laughs> and backpackers. <laughs> it's, they should just sell it as the Harambe. <laughs> oh God, yeah. <laughs> like Harambe is I mean, like if if they see the, me with this the kid, they're gonna kill me. So he takes the kid's hat and backpack and, and goes to school and pretends to be the kid. I, I, hello, fellow child. <laughs> <laughs> hello, fellow Homo sapiens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've got I've got some other. You know what? Uh, we'll I do, am uh, hetero sapien. Here we're gonna do. <laughs> we'll do this one, just because. Uh, four oh four fifteen. It's a uh, it's a follow up to um. It's a follow up to something we've already talked about, but I want to save. I want to save this one till I have the same energy I had for gay sex adultery on the street, uh, which I which I do not have right now. So, brown haired girl sues Japanese school for telling her to dye her hair black. Court makes decision. Four year lawsuit ends with a win for former student, but not the one she was hoping for. Ostensibly, school dress codes are supposed to be about eliminating distractions. And so it's common for Japanese schools to prohibit students from dyeing their hair. However, problems can occur if schools rigidly assume that no one dyeing their hair will always have black hair. Wait, that no one dyeing their hair will always result in everyone having the same hair color. Though the vast majority of ethnically Japanese people who make up the vast majority of students at schools in Japan have naturally black hair, some Japanese people's hair is instead a dark brown. This can lead to situations where a school tells a brown-haired student that they have to dye their hair black, often, often predicated by their not believing that the student's natural hair color is brown and that they're trying to get away with dyeing it. That was the case for a teen attending Kaifukan, uh, Kaifukan Pre oh, fuck me. That was the case for a teen attending Kaifukan Prefectural High School in the town of Hibikino, uh, Hibikino, God damn it. Uh, the town, uh, you can tell I'm getting tired. The town of Habikino, Osaka Prefecture. The girl enrolled in 2015 and was repeatedly told that she had to dye her, her brown hair black. The girl insisted that brown was her natural hair color, but the school says that three different teachers examined the roots of the girl's hair and what found the them to be black, which they took as a proof that she had been coloring her hair. At least they weren't checking the color of her bra, like some schools have done. Eventually, the girl, who is now 21 years old, claims that she was told if you're not going to dye your hair black, i.e. back to black in the school's opinion, then back there's no black. need for you to come to school. Feeling pressured and distressed, the girl did indeed stop attending classes, and the school then removed her name from her class seating chart and student roster. But instead I, of seeing, I, what's up? I just, I just gotta understand something. Is there such a big difference between like dark brown, black, and black that people are paying this close fucking attention to their hair color? Also, your hair color. So, my hair was completely blonde all the way almost down to my roots when I was in high school because I spent so much time working in the yards uh -huh. doing odd jobs. My hair turned completely blonde, and they had to cut it all the so way down. So you're telling me you were a gongaro? <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Um, <laughs> my hair turned pretty much completely blonde, and I have a like a. I've been told it's like a medium brown. I don't understand that. Don't start with me. The thing is, though, is I'm like, all she had to do was stay enough out in the out in like the yard, or we working in the yard. It can dye black hair and change it. Well, I think what probably was happening with this girl is that she probably wasn't full Japanese. Probably a generation or two back, she probably had a recessive gene of uh, foreigner hair that was not black. Right. As, as long as long as like 
they should just have a policy as long as it's not like your hair goes from being black while you're here to all of a sudden you have blue hair. That should be the policy, not oh hey your hair is well, brown. Well, these are policies to stop wokeism from affecting Japan. <laughs> wokeism. Markism. Woke its own self. Marxism. Also, anyway. while, while I've already saying this, uh, mm -hmm. I'm so sad my mic was off because when you said fuck me, I said only if your wife pays it. But I thought, <laughs> but I had accidentally clicked my mic off thinking I turned it on. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. In oh, the no. last podcast, when I came back in to say, oh, oh shit, I had mm -hmm. do not disturb on, I missed my tax appointment entirely. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, I just cucked myself, and, and then FDM, the and then FDM said, "Did he just say that to his tax guy?" <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> the second <laughs> the word, the second the word "cut" was was leaving my mouth, the whole the music stopped, and they came back on the call. <laughs> and, you, yes. and, and because I time stamped the last podcast. You can go check it out and see that I very clearly start stop talking to you guys and immediately start talking on the phone. Well, yeah, that's why that. I said it because yeah. I thought I heard the music stop or something <laughs> to that degree, and I'm like, uh oh, did he just? I was like, I I was like mid first syllable of the of the k as the whole music ended, so I'm cut myself <laughs> like, right. <laughs> <laughs> It was He's like, like uh, did, did I come at time. a bad time? Uh, <laughs> hi, hi, Dan. Um, you're on the tail end of the podcast. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, they, man. I am you, like, man. You do get a call out uh, in the pickups if that's any uh, hey, buddy. any uh, thing. Dan, man. What? Hey, AC, I'm proud of you. You oh, might you might not be okay with being proud of, but I'm proud of you for just <laughs> saying that to your tax agent. You might not have done it on purpose. But it's no. like it's like when a kid accidentally kicks a field goal because you know he tripped on a banana. <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah, because that happens. <laughs> it accidentally kicks a field goal into his own goal, his own goal post. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Or whatever. Anyway, all right. So um, back to this. All right. So they removed her name from the from the seating chart and student roster, but instead of seeing. Excuse me. But instead of seeing the, the school's administrators on campus, the woman decided to see them in court and in 2017 filed the lawsuit over the incident, asking for 2.2 million yen or 21,000 US dollars in compensation. Those are rookie numbers. <laughs> Can't even buy a Bitcoin with that. <laughs> on Tuesday, an Osaka district court handed down its ruling, finding neither side to be completely in the right. Presiding judge in Noriko Yokata recognized the <laughs> presiding judge Noriko Yokata Yokota, thank you, uh, recognized the validity of the school to set and enforce rules relating to coloring hair, saying, "quote Such rules have been established as uh, as having a reasonable and legitimate educational purpose, and so maintaining student discipline. This is how I think judges talk is within the discretion of the school." Yokota also declared, quote, it cannot be said that the school was forcing the girl to dye her hair black. Seeming, no. <laughs> seemingly, <laughs> seemingly taking the school's word that the girl's roots were black and that the administrators were only requiring her to return her, her, her natural hair color. However, the school isn't getting off completely free. The court also ruled that the administration's actions after the girl stopped coming to class, such as removing her name from the roster and removing her desk from the classroom, were unacceptable and has ordered Osaka Prefecture to pay damages of 3,190 US dollars to the woman. Damn, you, uh, you miss out on a high school education because they took you out of the class and here's $3,000. That's like that won't pay rent for a month. What the fuck? <laughs> that's like it that's like half an animator's salary for the whole year. <laughs> um, the the amount is far less than she had been seeking, and the lack of any legal condemnation for the school insisting her hair should be black is likely to leave the plaintiff less than satisfied. 
And her lawyer expressed disappointment that the court that the court took at face value the teacher's uh, assertion that the girl's roots and natural hair color were black. This was likely a critical point of contention, as certain educational organizations, such as the Tokyo Board of Education, now have policies against pressuring students with naturally non-black hair to dye it black. Meanwhile, Otherwise, that's I've, basically black supremacy. Uh, yeah. That's, this is how the Nazis started, right? They <laughs> made everybody wear blue contacts and dye their hair blonde. Yeah. That's what that's what they did, right? That's I, I saw that in a book somewhere. Green hair and blonde dyes, I should be recruiting them. <laughs> yeah. It's historically accurate, I promise. Fusion reborn quote. Uh, I appreciate hey, it, Lance. Good job. Um, meanwhile, Kaifukan says it has no plans to appeal the decision and attempt to avoid sanction entirely, and the school admits that it could make greater efforts to earn the understanding of students and their guardians regarding school rules. We have not changed our standard of having students who have dyed, uh, who have dyed their hair return it to black, but this case has been a learning experience, and we will be giving greater thought to how to better guide our students. First of all, didn't you say that she was 21? Um, she was, she uh, no, is 21, is 21 now. now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then I'll make my joke. I'll satisfy her. But that aside, the thing <laughs> was, was I just want to make sure that you're 17 as of this now. Um, the thing was, was, okay. I, if I had a daughter and she went to a school and I found out that four teachers, I don't give a damn if they're all women. Are fucking got my daughter in a room and they are looking at the roots for hair with a fucking magnifying glass. I'm yeah. gonna kick somebody's ass. Yeah. Well, she don't about, need to wait four years for some kind of magnification. Did you I find that out that all the teachers pre previous to this? What color was the student's hair? Was the student's hair light brown three years ago? Yeah, it was. Oh, was it? Was it the same color in kindergarten? Yeah, it was. Oh. I mean, Lance, Japanese middle school, middle school. Criticized for pulling out girls' bra straps to check their color. We covered this already, though. Yeah. So, do you want me to start a comment on this? <laughs> no. <laughs> Would you um, like me to go so, off on that tangent? So, I've got one here. I don't know if it's any good. Smugglers arrested over $2.82 million in cocaine soaked cornflakes. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so, look at Peach. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> the fact that Sankaku Complex had an image for this has got to have made Riff's day. Like, anyway, oh but God. I'm pretty tired, uh, and I just I feel like um, I feel like I want to save this one for a day when I'm uh, not, not down. Tired. Can you do me a favor? Yeah, just let me be there when you do it. Oh, please! I, be there I would love for you. Be it's I not that. It's not that long, but I just feel like you know it's there just, are some nights when we're it's hot. It's gonna be hilarious, and that's that's not me right now. <laughs> yeah, I, so I, I um, want to be there for y'all, Shimano. I'm just saying it. Like I want to. Oh yeah, that's next part. Well, that's not next podcast because uh, I haven't. It's next one after next. If I'm not June wrong. Chan, yeah, correct. So what's so, on? What's about the next watch club? The next watch club is continuing June Chan because I you haven't started it. I'm I'm still watching it. Uh, I'm loving it so far. Uh, I'll, I'll just say I cannot like it took it took a couple episodes getting used to, but holy hell, is this show ridiculous? Uh, as yeah. as seen by the picture uh, behind Reese's head. Um, <clears throat> so while while we're in, like, can I make a real quick comment? Because I know they it. gave uh, they gave. I don't know why I put, put said it like that. The thing was they gave. Um, uh, jobless reincarnation, such shit. But I was listening to the dub, and that scene, yeah, like there's a scene where the baby is just where he's as a baby just laying in the room, and they're in there doing it. I gotta yep. look at. I, I think I know who the voice actors are, but those two were so fucking funny. Are we talking about jobless reincarnation? Or are yes. we talking about Yeah, okay. the, the, the thing about the, the show is that the guy uh, is re reincarnated and he's a he basically from childhood, like young, young childhood, he has perfect whatever memories of his past he's, as a 30 he's a year. He, 
he experienced and, yeah, so he's still a pervert as as like yeah. a one so he has thing. panties on his face as a child and oh, his mom's funny. just like oh that's not what it's he for honey and, and his stuff. his parents are just railing each other at yeah. like in the background <laughs> it's just like you're such a beast and i broke right there i was god oh, oh, like, my oh god, yeah mom, my, my mom's hot but i don't get hard from sucking on our tits at night He's 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 like he's like it's kind of he's like he's kind of he's kind of nice. I think he says something like it's kind of nice to watch him get on. But is it the fact that she's the mom that I'm not getting off to it? And I'm like, you are a baby. <laughs> this is even so good. And yet people like the scene that they said doesn't even happen in the anime. Like I know I know from what people said didn't happen in the did Reese just cut himself? I I think Reese just cut himself. <laughs> hey, does someone have a Reese cut count? Yeah, no, we don't have. Well, one. Lance, the thing is, there's like. I don't know, oh. probably six or seven episodes out of Mushoku Tensei uh, that are subbed. So for dub, you're only like one or two episodes so far. Yeah, I'm one. I'm All one right. Well, uh, yeah. Right, no, I'm I would. Up. I would very much like to. Uh, I would very much like to watch that show at some Podcast point. Name. Though, you're such a beast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll t- I'll take it. Um, we just got to remember that you're. Uh, we just we just got to remember that. <laughs> Thank you for slandering me with your with your shitty typing, Reese. <laughs> um, we just got to remember that you were the one who came up with that title for the uh, for the spreadsheet on contribution right. bonuses. Um, I'll, I'll I'll let you know. All right. Anyway, guys, Dan, do you want to talk about Jude and Chan a little bit? Just our like, I thought it might be fun to talk about our thoughts going in and then come back for our actual thoughts of the series. I feel like uh, we could probably just do it all at once next we week. We can. I, I, mean, I feel like I feel like this podcast has had some weird energy. We gotta finish in like uh, fifteen seconds to get four twenty. Oh, mm. right. all right, guys. Thank you for joining Bye. us. <laughs> we'll see you. How can I do this? Do I... Four, five. Four, I'm gonna do it. At, three, I'm gonna do it at seven. Two, one. Eight. Bye. <laughs>